from 622.23 of a request for a site plan approval for a new two family by Chris Lee of Backyard ADUs at a location on Birch Pit Road or in Florence, map ID 36413. Um, and we have notes from staff that the applicant has requested withdrawal of the application for the time being. Any other information that needs to be put on the record, Carolyn, about that one? Um, no, they just asked. Um, I think it would might be appropriate to um, make a motion to with um, approve the withdrawal without prejudice. They didn't specify. It's not clear they're going to move forward with the project, but in the event that they do come back, they could do it within two years if you vote to allow withdrawal within two years. Okay. I mean, sorry, allow withdrawal without prejudice. They can come back within two years. Sorry. So again, this is for a, a cluster of small homes up in some of them affordable housing up off of Birch Pit Road. Most of them have been built out already by uh, um, Valley Habitat, but uh, there is just still this one remaining lot. Is there a motion to accept the withdrawal without prejudice? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of the motion? Thank you. All right, good luck, Mr. Chris Lee of Backyard ADUs. See you in the future. Um, at 7.05, we'll open up a site plan review um, for a second attached dwelling by David Poppy and Sally Mbimbo at 55 Florence Street, Leeds, map ID 11C-38. Um, and this is for a site plan review. Are the applicants here to make a presentation? Hey, please come on up to the podium. Tell us what you have planned. Um, do you want to see the video or do you have? I submitted my phone. Yeah, we'll need to see them, I think. Um, Anyone want to see my eight and a half by 11 visual that you cannot read back from? Oops. Um, right here. Oh, okay. You can no, just no. open it okay. and then, um, do you know how to do a screen share? I don't. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm just going to go back to Zoom. Can you click on that? And then click right here. And then share screen. And then is that it? That's the okay. main the main site. Okay. <laughs> um okay, so what we're proposing to do Oh yes, sir, sure. Uh my name is David Poppy at 55 Florence Street in Leeds. Um uh, my wife is Sally Bembo, who's home with my sick son. Um, what we propose to do is to um, add on to the current house a two-level structure. The top level will be a two-bedroom apartment um, for rental. And the first the bottom level will be my artist studio. I'm a professional artist. Um, so I'm not sure much more information. I've, I've submitted quite a few drawings. Um, I think I've worked out like parking issues that we had. Um, there was a zoning thing about, uh, I don't know exactly what you call it, like an awning over the entryway, which she didn't put on in my drawer, my drafts and didn't put it on there, but I was planning on putting it on there anyway. Um, I don't want someone to have to get their keys in the rain. Um, so that would be, that was one concern. Um, I can't remember other concerns there were, I think there was something about a dumpster. Right. <clears throat> So the, the drawing of the additional overhang will be on your next submittal of plans, your final plans. It has to be shown on the plan. That's the plans. Okay. Yeah, I can see I've read that on, on, on to it. Um, the, a covered front entry. Yeah. Um, the, the bit about the dumpsters, we don't allow the dumpsters per se in that area. So you need to have refuse containers. Okay. That are Fine. hidden from site. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, I don't plan on having that much waste anyway. And we also saw on the plans that you reference a studio space, and the studio is just for your work. It's for my work only. Sometimes we understand studios as being a studio apartment. No, no, no. And you no, can't no. have another unit there. No, 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 no. This is going to be a part wood shop because I make my own framing and stretchers and then my actual art studio. Okay. Um, so what do you think? Do we need to ask the applicant to reference that somehow or describe studio a little bit differently? I don't think so. I think when it just comes to the building permit application, that that's um, clarified at that level. I mean, they're just it's describing what the use of the studio is, so that should um, suffice. Okay. Could you show us the what we call the elevations, the view from the street? I might need help with this. <laughs> I'm a piece. I'm a I'm a Mac guy. PCs are a little new to me. Um, I just need to get to that. Yeah. So um, first, um, come back. Oh, stop screen share. The easiest way to do it. Right, thank you. Then go back to your. I think it's over here. Is this it? Yeah. And double click that. Whichever one. Let's see which one is. So that's probably what you want to see. Yeah, Straight and then go back to Zoom yep. and share, share that. Yep. Okay. All right, and click, click on. in there and then share. Yep, and then click that one. I'm going to select that and then hit share. Okay, so great. I'm saying, I think you can get on there. Yeah. Okay, so that is the street. As you can see, like you said, I have to add that. It's going to match the one that we currently have. Um, so it'll look, makes sense. So the second, the top floor unit that you're going to rent out has an entrance from the street side and the and, rear and the rear side. Yes, there'll be a, there's a deck that's going to, you can see it on the top right. There is a deck that will, cause it's on a hill. That will be the rear. That's the rear entrance. Thanks. Yeah. Um, there was a question about a large tree that was recently removed, the catalpa tree. Mm -hmm. Did you do that in preparation for this work here? Well, it was actually a little bit of both. Um, it split, and there was no way to sit. We but we would have to remove it to do this project, so it was in conjunction, kind of was the same. Yeah. We ended up putting an oak. There's new oak in our front yard now to replace that. Does that work for us, or do we need something on the street? Um, so typically, if a tree is removed before you come to the planning board and it's over 20 inches and it's healthy, um, there's a look back, a 12-month look back. So it, I guess um, the question would be, how long ago, well, one, did it split in a storm, and so you had to remove it, I guess, and then, it, then the point is moved about, you know, how far back did this take you down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, too bad. A little visual uh, evidence for us would have been nice, but uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was either that or you'll see it on my house. <laughs> no, no. That would have been the other one because <laughs> it was split. And I had a tree guy go out and he said, you can cable it. There's three big, but catalpas are so weak. Um, we just decided to take it out. Thanks. It was hollow in the center, actually. Thanks. Um, a, a big part of the plan is the, the driveway to accommodate what you're requesting, I, I think, four cars. Mm -hmm. um, but And we have a rough drawing of that. Yes. <clears throat> I was up there um, today. Yep, I it see. doesn't seem that four cars fit. So are you going to actually be doing some renovations to the driveway and the parking area? Yeah, one vehicle is... Um... Yes. Um, the two two can pull into the to the, facing the new structure, and two can face forward. There are there are spaces for four. Well, there really aren't. One parks on the grass, and I, I don't know how far we can go there. One park the one's facing the structure. One parks on the grass, and the other one parks alongside it. Or well, maybe it was just your teenager pulling in there. I don't know, but it doesn't appear to be no. Because um, um, I currently have two cars facing. Yeah where the car is going to be currently. And then I have one car parked facing the back of the property, which has room alongside it for a second car. 
And this unit number is less than a thousand square feet. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. So that would only require one additional space. So really, by code, really, they only require have three spaces, uh -huh. and you could have tandem spaces as well. So okay. for the first unit, you could have the two spaces and then the, the third next to it. So whether or not it fits four, it really needs to fit three. Okay. So. All right. And we're comfortable with this drawing as part of the, the final plan to show that parking. I also submitted some photos as well in the file of the, the current parking. Um, there, yeah, there were photos that um, appeared to accommodate it okay. those three cars. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I didn't really have a, um, I didn't flag that as an okay. issue. All right. Good. Any other? Questions for the applicant before we open it up to the public? I just have one other quick question. Um, say everything gets through and not, uh, you know, approved and whatnot. Um, how long does it, the permit, how long can you keep the permit? Say, for instance, I mean, everything is bananas when it comes to building costs. And um, I'm pretty prepared with it, but um, there's a few things that I haven't cost out yet, like concrete, <laughs> um, to see. You know, is it going to be better to wait till spring, or you know what I mean? Like, how far out can this with this with this permit last, in case that something like that came up? Sure, I'll I'll ask Carolyn. Uh, for okay, any rocks the. So your permit is valid um, for three years after the end of the appeal period, and that's three years to um, substantially start the project. You don't okay. have to be finished in three years. Okay, perfect. All right, great. All right, at this time, we'd like to open it up to the public. Anyone has any questions about the application? Um, any comments about the application from here in this area? Is there anybody on Zoom who questions from the Zoom uh, participants come through chat to the staff? I don't see any chat. Uh, Mr. Poppy, did you have a chance to talk to your uh, neighbors? Oh, yes. Yep. I'm regular communication with them. Okay. Oh, we're all good friends. And we're all, they're all good with it. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Just so, to be clear, they don't have to all be good with it. They are though. <laughs> question. <laughs> that's right. totally arbitrary. No, I'm. I, yeah. I mean, it's it's. Yeah. That's fine. No, but it, no, it, 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 I prefer to be. Let's put it this way. I would prefer them to be okay with. I don't want to have. I wouldn't want to start something with a neighbor. It's not no. a criteria for approval. Let's just say. No, they are. No, they are. It's just nice to know that if they're notified beyond that yellow sign that's in the front yard. No, I talked to. In no. fact, I know pretty much. From one neighbor on one side, all the way up the block, up to the top of the thing, everyone knows. And Thank you. Fine with it. So, Great. and there were some DBW comments that came in today. And they're mostly just sort of informational, um, but um, the the DPW suggests that water service has to be connected from the main dwelling into the new unit after um, the existing water meter, and trench permits need to be pulled. So this is just FYI, not conditions. Um, and um, they recommend that um, you implement um, erosion control to minimize runoff during construction when the soils are exposed because you're on that hill yep. to your downhill neighbors. Again, this is not a permit condition, but um, we DPW can give you guidance about what and how to do that. Yep, I would definitely get in touch yeah. with them for that. I don't want to. I don't want to flood my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the only other thing I don't know, I can't remember. I'm sorry if it was in the application. Was about the all electric utilities um, for yes. the unit. Okay. All will will be using um, mini splits, electric, electric mini splits for the whole the, the whole structure and the appliances in the kitchen. Electric. I can't. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm all okay. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, we we also are p potentially. And that's, this is also going by how much it costs. We may put solar on the roof, so that will help with that. Right. That's one of our big. Our, our hopefully we can get it in the budget. So, in this application, does a need to have a traffic study at this point? Um, so we were waiving any mitigation fee that might be attached to not having a traffic study because of the, the small impact on the neighborhood. Yeah, I, would, I had recommended in my staff report because it's not so much the study, but the fact that it's a unit that 
previously fell under a by right accessory dwelling, which wouldn't have tri triggered traffic mitigation, that because um, that, that you have the authority to waive traffic mitigation um, for one additional, you know, unit based on the fact that it wouldn't otherwise need site plan review. Again, we sort of have gone through this a couple of times with some of the smaller two units yep. that are added. Yep. So. Okay, good. Um, any other questions for the applicant before we close the public hearing? All right, very good. So is there a motion then uh, close the public hearing? We close the public hearing. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Great, public hearings closed. So now we, we really can't have any back and forth at this time, but certainly you can talk to Carolyn after the event if you have yeah, yeah. clarifications. I need okay. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Any discussion? Anybody ready for a motion? Did we, we didn't come up with any conditions, it doesn't sound like. Yeah, I think we do. We have, so they has to uh, present us with, prior to a building permit, the applicant has to submit um, revised plans. Oh, for the overhang. For the overhang. Yeah. Um, I think we're we're okay with the tree replacement um, that happened because of the the tree that was sick. Um, we under, we have this understanding about the studio space now. That studio is not a studio apartment, so that doesn't need to be. And we could put in a recommendation about the refuse. You know, needs to be screened and no dumpsters allowed. I think. The dumpster is just during construction, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I guess it'll take dumpster during construction. No, no, no. It was more long term, like permanent yeah. refuse storage in oh, a dumpster. Okay. That's the way that so an additional comment to the in the application submittal said that there would be a dumpster on site. So I think there may have been some okay. confusion That's with right. terminology about just you know storing garbage, but for a single family home or two family it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to have a dumpster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we usually put something in about waiving the traffic mitigation fee, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. So then we have three conditions. Should we make that dumpster the screening uh, condition, or have we just clarified that? Um, it's Which up to you. So I have one condition so far about submitting revised plans showing the covered front entry, and then whether or not the dumpster is allowed through your motion to approve in that approval, you can say with a waiver of traffic mitigation as opposed to making it a condition. Great. I mean, I don't think they need to build a, they just need to say they can't have a dumpster. They yeah. don't need to build a, a, right. a blockage for right. Right. trash cans. Right. Right. Yep. Agreed. And the language around studio space is just that they can't rent a studio space. It's not that. No one else can use this an art studio. It's just they can't rent it. It can't be a business. Or something. Right, 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 right. And it's not. And it wasn't. It wasn't clear in the application. I think now through the hearing, you've heard <laughs> what it's for, and it's fine to, for anybody to have a studio on their own space. It just wasn't clear in the application. Right. Great. So we have two conditions, and then a, a piece tied to the motion about the waiving of the mitigation, the traffic mitigation fee. Well, I would move to approve the project with the conditions and waiver that we just discussed. Okay. second. All right, motion's been made and seconded to approve the application at uh, 55 Florence Road with two conditions and the waiver. Any discussion? Well, all right. All those in favor? Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck with your project. All right. Next on the agenda is a site plan review for a 7,000 plus square foot addition and site modification by Cooley Dickinson Hospital at 30 Locust Street, map by D23B. Uh, this is site plan review, and we need a majority vote of four of our seven members, or four of our six, I guess.
The what? Oh. Well, that is hard to see. Good evening. Sorry, technical oh. difficulties here. My name is uh, Mike Petrin. I'm a senior project manager with VHB. I've got Scott Slater, Director of Facilities. Thank you. Well, I guess it is easier to see up there. Um, we are here in front of you uh, for site plan review uh, for a 7,000 square, generally 7,600 square foot uh, addition in front of the existing um, main entrance to the ER. So this is the main entrance signalized here. This is the entrance to the surgical wing. The ER is, entrance is generally here right now. And the main entrance to the hospital is is here. So the new the new building addition is this piece of building right here. Do you want to explain? Yeah, the reason I highlighted in the addition. The addition actually comes out to an island that currently is where our emergency um, emergency drop off is. So we're not impacting the flow of the traffic through our lot. All the the traffic can remain the same. We're not impacting any parking. Um, all we're doing is we're making a new drop-off area, pushing, we're focusing on expanding our nurses station for a rate track for staff safety. We're um, focused on pushing our current waiting room out, obviously to the front, and we're converting all of our rooms to private rooms and adding some uh, to it at the same time. So um, so we're, we're not impacting any of the, um, Current site plan, other than a small island in front of our current EP. Could we could just get your name and address for the? Sure, Jonathan Slater, Director of Police Dickinson. Um, my home address is 8 Alvin Street in Slaw Meadow, Mass., and I'm located at 30 Locust Street. Most of my time. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to zoom in so we can see some of the components a little bit better. All right, starting at the entrance, we are disconnecting a sidewalk that would run behind. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this will be new ambulance parking in this area here. Uh, we are disconnecting a sidewalk that would take people behind this area where the ambulances would, would park. And all pedestrian flow will now be uh, in this location here. That allows the ambulances to turn to back up and turn into the travel lane. And correct, we are we are going to widen that main drive aisle about four feet ish to to help with that. Yep. Correct. And that cross hatch there is just uh, macadam. It's just this is what yes to keep people from parking here. Uh, the um, ambulances will have a canopy over them now, where they didn't before. Um, there is a new drop off spot in front for this new entrance which is here, um, and all new crosswalks being installed. Uh, in order to accomplish this, we will have to redo some of the sidewalks in front as part of the project. Uh, we have included uh, oops. Sorry, I'm a blue beam guy. Um, we do have erosion controls. Uh, unfortunately, most of the site is paved, um, so there's no no way to really use hay bales and silt fence that you typically see. But we will be installing uh, silt sacks in all the catch basins uh, within the parking lots in this area. That's designated by these little black dots. Uh, utility wise, I'm going the right way. Let me zoom in again. The area on the screen. Um, that's not it. One more sheet. Utilities are pretty straightforward. Uh, we don't need any water, gas, or sewer connections for this project. 
um, just some, some minor um, stormwater changes here in this area, new catch basin here, and a roof drain tie into the existence, existing system here. Um, there is a small, small increase in impervious out here. Um, however, when the large basin that this was, uh, that this drains to was designed, it assumed that this whole area was impervious. So there's, there's not going to be any impact uh, to stormwater. A uh, pretty straightforward project. I know it's a it's a somewhat of a large addition, if if you will, but in comparison to the site, it's somewhat small. Uh, very straightforward project. Are you, are you collecting the canopy runoff? The canopy runoff uh, actually sheets back to the existing building, goes through uh, interior roof drains. Okay. Yep. One question on your um, portfolio department as well. So I see those are big spaces for yeah. houses, which is great. Wondering if you thought about maybe curb stops there, the, up so they can't back too far in. So that sidewalk back there is is quite deep. Um, we made that for a reason, and there's a raised curb there uh, to the sidewalk, so they will be able to back up and be able to get a gurney out of the back. I'm just worried because you want like ten feet off the back of the ambulance for the gurney. So I'm wondering if you want to put curb stops maybe like five feet into the pavement so the ambulance can't back up too far. Get pitched through these wheels and kind of through the back of it. That is it's a 13 foot wide sidewalk back here, so pretty big. It's pretty big, yeah. would expect too many traffic <laughs> with the with the gurries because we're our bays are busy. Yeah. So but that's a um, great point. We'll bring it up with the architects and we'll see what we can put in there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a good <laughs> question. I'll put, I didn't see they're already there, but thank you for that. I also have a question just on the drop off in front of the entry there. Yes. So, so is that going to be enough for you? Just like one car? So it's going to be different for us because currently uh, people do take advantage of that and they actually do park there. Uh, but we're hoping this this new uh, workflow encourages that them to do just a drop. And um and move to a parking space, so it, it's it's a new workflow. But that's what it, that's what it requires, and that's what we we need to have happen with the volume we have. So the community is going to have to get a little used to that piece for us. I recently had the pleasure of using your emergency services there. Everything worked out well. I didn't go into details. Um, but when I was there, I noticed those three, four, five cars parked in front of the E room. And especially when people are coming out on a wheelchair, mm -hmm. uh, will they be expected then to be pushed across the street and down to the parking areas? Um, yeah, that's going to so be normally that that workflow was from our endoscopy unit because that's where our endoscopy patients would be picked up. But we're rerouting their workflow to the north entrance, so they'll be um, dropped off and picked up from that entrance now. Okay. So our endoscopy suite is going to have a whole new workflow. Um, do our do our north entrance. Okay. Um, that's most of the uh, wheelchair traffic that we would see out there. Um, if it's a if it's a pickup for a, a new patient from the ED, then of course they'd be able to pull up to the front and grab them. Yeah. So while we're on that topic of the north entrance, it sounds like a good solution. But I think when uh, the hospital came before us for the north entrance, there's a circular drive there, and it's and now it's being used for parking all the time how will you manage that and i don't think that was kind of in the plans back 10 years ago and people are using it now yeah, for... yeah parking is um one of our uh, biggest work plans right now uh we do have a new director of security they are developing a new parking policy because honestly a lot of our issues are our employees um who aren't using the proper lots for their for their parking so we have policed it on several occasions with multiple departments supporting that effort, and it really is a problem. So while this is um, being planned, those are being um, mitigated through a, a new policy and uh, procedure workflow. So um, creating the more parking spots for our patients is going to improve that. And we do have a new security team uh, who is staffed on 24-7 uh, in-house. We're, we're no longer um, outsourcing that service. They're all employed by Cooley now. Do you have any plans to think about signage? I think a lot of people don't know that a hospital might have more than one front door, and you guys have 
I think four, five, depending how you count. Uh, people are often coming to you guys and not the most like best frame of mind for reading like blocks of text on signs. So um, especially now you're going to be like hiding the main entrance a little bit more. I mean, I know you have the canopy and I don't know if you've given any thought to the wayfinding in the outside a little bit. So the um, obviously the new big emergency sign on the front of the building is something to see. Um, you know, coming in the front, we don't think the north building is impacted. And I think if you're coming for an emergency, uh, you find that easy enough um, for what we are hoping from our design. And the people who are coming for the outpatient services through our main entrance um, uh, are usually familiar with the campus, but uh -huh. we, we are losing one sign that's in the middle of that island, but all that one says is emergency. Right. Um, the, the wayfinding sign when you first pull in is the directional, the new M Mass General Brigham sign and right. you know colors and stuff. So. Right, eight, eight or nine things yeah. on there, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I would attach it to a zoning approval or planning of approval. It's just something to think about. And if you're thinking about parking, it's obviously something you'll be yeah, talking you, about. You're going to something new that uh, maybe our main entrance does need something a little bit different. So um, I'll, I'll talk to the design team about that. And will we have an emergency, like a big red emergency sign? Is that going to be... Yeah, that's th th there are there, there are a couple of signs attached to the building, correct? There's that are one, coming through the 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 building permit process. There's one yeah. vertical and horizontal. Yeah. yeah, one at the height of the building, down the side when you first pull in is probably all you'll see, mm -hmm. and then the one over the top. Yeah. Does, does it change? These changes? Do you have to put in the um, the uh, charging stations? Uh, we have um, added six, well, okay. six stations, 12 ports to our lot already, and they're working very well. They're in our north parking lot. Yeah. I think to answer the question that um, that is triggered with the addition of um, 15 um, new parking spaces, I think, is when a new charging um, uh, ports are required, but they're not adding parking. They're taking it away. No, they're just adding build. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's not a big addition of staff that change the physical change of the e-room, right? So what we're doing is we're meeting our current flow of patients. Um, unfortunately, with funding, we're not expanding for future at this time, but we do have plans that we're already talking about. But no, we're, we're not um, adding um, more. We're just meeting current <laughs> that makes sense so are you adding more days uh, or just making them private uh, no we are adding um uh two more behavioral health mm -hmm. and and uh and then we're increasing uh we're gonna have two float um uh, float rooms that could be either for emergency care or for behavioral health because yeah. that's where our our volume is and we do have a few a uh, few more uh, patient rooms coming out of this yeah yeah now we're doing a low acuity script to put uh, the chair uh, air that don't need a um, guardian for a back to land. Yeah, so you can do a little yeah. bit smaller. Yeah, yeah. low acuity space. Yeah. And what's happening with the waiting room? Yeah, the waiting There's, room is going to. I've been in there a few times, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it, it's moving out. Um, we're going to um, have the same amount of volume um, within it. We're not making that larger. Um, but it's going to be a little bit different process. So security will be directly present um, in the, on the um, walking up the ramp to the right. Unfortunately, the grade does cause us to add a, we have to put stairs and a ramp, but we're going to have a vestibule and then you can go up the ramp or use the stairs uh, because there is an elevation change that we do have to deal with. Um, but, and that's that's inside. That's interior. Yeah, it's all interior. enclosed. Yeah, that that added the square footage because we didn't want it to be outside. It was supposed to be a six thousand, and it went to sixty four, and then we had to add the vestibule. So, oh, they say the change, change. <laughs> <laughs> And then there, there looks like there's some sort of alleyway between Building E and the expansion. Yeah, so, right, right here. There, there is a mechanical way. It sticks yeah. up out of the ground here. So yeah. yes, th there will be a little alley. So what's going to happen back? Like what's the surface? Just lumped and seated. Really? You think you can grow? 
I, yeah, we, we will see if yeah if if it if it doesn't get enough sun then we'll probably have and to mulch stone. it or stone it. The first time was a built courtyard for um, uh, breaks for mm -hmm. this path, but it was kind of hard to enclose it and how do you maintain it in the winter and stuff. So we'll probably try to put a few picnic tables out there, encourage uh, people to get some fresh air. Um, we plan that we talked about connecting it to the other buildings. So many options, but this, this was our most um, um, our best way to approach it financially uh, for this. Um, with the removal of that island in front of the current emergency room, we're going to lose, I think, three or four trees. What are your plans to replace those? Yeah, so lose two, two trees, I, I believe we're losing. Um, and maybe a, a, which on, on the right book. We just, we just planted um, 24 trees along um the main road with the um with the help of the um the tree team and they, i can't remember what their what their um uh, name is <laughs> three north Hampton. yes yes um so um we're not um, gonna have much real estate yeah well you have nice uh, uh row planted rows between the uh the parking bays between each one of those channels so to speak of uh parking mm -hmm. um but up at the end cap so to speak is there room there to put another tree or two in order to encourage because some kind of growth there? Uh, that's a good, uh, that's another good takeaway because they are pretty good sized islands at the end of those. And there could be some, we're struggling with some of our island trees now. The root systems don't take well and we find that they're, they're not taken. So we have to um, remove them um, and find out something new to plant. But I'll talk with the design team and our um, landscaping team to see if they recommend something for us. Okay. And our city our arborist would be glad to chime in too if you wanted to get in touch with him who works at the DPW because he's part of that tree in Northampton and they're dealing with the same struggles around urban tree survival, you know, so. Yep. I'll definitely make the call. Okay, so you could then, we can expect that you'll add a couple of trees to those islands. Yeah, we, we, we can make, make that a part uh, a, a, a condition approval. Other questions? So m my last one is I appreciate that you flagged the parking concerns. You know, about 15 years ago, I think uh, Cooley came in front of the board to expand their parking out back towards Smith Volk. Um, and, and there was a lot of talk about a parking plan there and growth. Um, I don't know if Cooley Dick ever did anything around incentives for employees to not drive to campus. Um, but certainly what I noticed is that there's no facility for bicycles. There was at one time, but I think we're going to lose it. We've already kind of lost that. And I don't see anything on the plans. It would be great at this time if you could do a, some kind of covered facility for bicyclists to encourage some of your staff and even some of your visitors to come to campus on a bike rather than cars. Yeah, recently we're talking about some of our bike racks that are a little bit outdated. Um, and there are some opportunities for that. We do have bike compartments um, in between the McCallum and the main entrance where people could store in an enclosed um, environment if they have their own padlocks, but uh, we can certainly increase that um, ability. Uh, within, during this construction and up front, there used to be a place where I parked myself underneath uh, to the <clears throat> east side of the north entrance. That was a covered portico. Um, and now just a motorcycle uses that. So <laughs> might that might yeah, come back. Or... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe where that grass isn't, isn't, isn't going to successfully grow. You can do it there. <laughs> <It's between. laughs> I'm not, yeah. Pro bikes, not, that's not super yeah. wide. No. Out there. No. Maybe bikes will grow. Bike for, <laughs> wouldn't be able to walk past it. Right. But if you're saying you can put picnic tables back there, it's really wide enough for a yeah. bike. Yeah, I don't see picnic tables either. Yeah, the, the, the one issue is is just that that mechanical way right here. I don't think it's big enough for anything. No. no. Yeah. They're made on the other side of the um, outpatient services, whatever, around the, um, whatever. Over on the other side. Yeah. Um, um, there used to be bike racks, I think, down the alleyway. Down the ramp, yeah, that's where the bottom. If you put some up high on that, you know, to the left of that front thing there, like a big locker. Yeah, I, I have some ideas um, just as, we, as we're as we talking about it. So 
I mean, you all can sort of put a commission say, put in a storage for four or six, whatever bikes, and then let them figure out where it goes. Yep. Yep. Other questions from the board before we open it up to the public? All right. Um, so at this time, we invite anyone from the public, either here in the room or on Zoom, to uh, comment, come to the podium and yeah, comment on the application. We'll start with the people here in City Council Chambers. It's like a bike back for 50. Please. Hi, I'm Alex Jarrett, City Councilor for Ward 5, which Cooley is in. Um, and I appreciate uh, the continued investment that Cooley is putting into their facilities. Um, I did want to bring two concerns that I've heard from my constituents. One has to do with flooding concerns. The um, Elm Street Brook, also called Broughton's Brook, uh, that is down, you know, Elm Street, there's the hospital road at the back of your, uh, that entrance there, there's a brook that flows there. It's seen repeated flooding events. Um, it's, you know, the, it's the people, those houses were built in the floodplain. Yeah that brook. So it is certainly not Cooley Dickinson's responsibility uh, <clears throat> to fix all of the problems. However, our concern is that no no flooding be made worse and that um, and that include uh, the expectation that we're going to see increased rainfall events with climate change as we already are. Um, so with the per impervious surface that's that's increasing here or um, we want to make sure that where that is going uh, can handle not not only the increase that you're putting here, but also the the increase we expect in rainfall. So that that's a concern from residents. Uh, the second is uh, uh, about bicycle parking. Thank you for bringing up that issue. Um, I have a constituent who who works at Cooley Bikes used to park under the north. Uh, north wing that covered bike bike parking area. Uh, her bike does not fit in the um, covered lockers that you have. So just a, a second um, to 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 make to bring back the the covered parking that's been removed. I'm not sure if that's related to this project, but um, and to expand that, it would be great if whatever zoning requirements that we have that are related to the number of parking spaces that we, uh, for motor vehicles, that we also uh, have that ratio uh, for bicycle parking. So those are a couple of concerns from constituents. I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Council. I certainly appreciate that feedback. Um, uh, stormwater is one of our biggest priorities, you know, at, at Cooley. It's been on my table since I started with the team. And yes, and, and again, stormwater wise, this the, the basin was designed for this area being 100% impervious. So uh, that was assumed. Obviously, we have those center islands that, that we didn't account for um, uh, during the original design of the basin. So um, retention pond is, was, was designed to. Uh, Assuming that the, the entire area and this area here was impervious, so so there won't be any net change. I think so. Uh, I just wonder if our DPW had any comments on the stormwater plans. Um, yeah, sorry, comments from the they just came in this afternoon. Um, so um, they just um said that there were um. There was no issue with the stormwater, um, but they just um, wanted to. They, the, you know, there is an ongoing stormwater ma management and operation maintenance in inspection agreement recorded the registry of deeds. Annual reports are required in accordance with that agreement. They haven't received those annual reports since 2016, so um, they are asking that prior to start of the construction. Um, that DPW receive a complete annual report documenting the condition of the system um, and that maintenance has been performed in accordance with the recorded maintenance um, agreements um, for the last two years. Jonathan uh, hired VHB uh, a couple months ago to, to do those inspections. So uh, we were actually out uh, earlier this week and, and performed them. We, we, I haven't had a chance to write up the, the results yet. But. Okay. I can elaborate on it just a little more too. In 2016 is when the agreement was made with my 
um, predecessor, um, John Lombardi, it was carried through 2021. Um, that information wasn't on my desk when I started with Cooley in 2019, but how I found out was when the credit stopped coming into our uh, bills <laughs> that we would be credited for the work that we did. Um, I immediately, we did some research into it. Uh, we worked with Wilson Construction on site to, to maintain the uh, retention ponds and we need to get a new plan in place. So all that stuff is in works right now. So I appreciate that feedback. Mm -hmm. You add that as a condition. You can certainly add as a condition that you know prior to the issuance of building permit that they submit the required reporting documents. There's one chat comment when you're ready. Okay, great. Anyone else from the in-person meeting who'd like to make a comment? Okay, we'll turn to the Zoom participants then. So this came in from Becca. Um, from what I read in the drainage memo for this project, it says no additional steps needed for existing drainage system. I live at 460 Elm Street behind the hospital across from the wetlands. The current system could not handle the rains from last week. My basement flooded. Fire department had to come twice to pump it out. Water continued to come in for days. I realized the location of the house means increased chance of wet basement. However, a neighbor reported that the past CDH parking project led to worse flooding. Um, and so my current concern is one, um, I don't have engineering expertise to understand the memo and um, ask for clarification of why nothing is needed now to address the drainage. Um, and did the study for this permit take into account future increased rain due to climate change? Rebecca Leopold, 460 Elm Street. So I think you heard the yeah. response to them. So Rebecca, I think um, we can't quite see you, but uh, right, the CDH team explained that the studies was to take into account all of that impervious service um, surface and that their catchment, their system is, is good enough to handle that. Um, and the, our DPW um, technicians who understand those plans much better than many of us, um, we're okay with what they've seen. Yeah, um, it's all, it, the brook, as Councillor Jared mentioned, has been an ongoing situation forever. Um, the, the, count, the earlier councillors spent a lot of time working on that area. Um, and yeah. then I can just also, um, uh, sh so there had been a, a period of time a few years ago when applicants were still using sort of the old 1960s number for rainfall events in their stormwater projections. We require the updated stormwater calculations that um, from NOAA, so those have been used to determine the calculations, which have, um, you know, essentially the rainfall, um, the inches per rainfall for each storm event to 10 and 100 year are higher now than what was projected from whenever it was the 1960s. So if those surface parking lots back there would come to before us now, the calculations would be different and their systems might have been different, but it was 15 years ago before we changed those. No, but what I'm saying is these calculations they submitted today, yeah. they show that they are with the updated calculation. So it meets the current yeah. standards. The community is important to us too. And with what I'm hearing based on the new parking lot, there's nothing to stop us from doing an additional study. Uh, we'll get a proposal to just review that area one more time just to make sure that, that in the back. So we'll, we'll run a separate study to support that, that um, ask from the, from the community and from, uh, from that side. So, well, BHB likes that news. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do know this, too, is that in the past, there there was a, a fl another flooding concern when, when the parking lots were being built. And um, my manager fa at, um, found a construction barrel that was plugging um, one of the outlets from the city street. So th th there's, a, there's a lot of things that can happen um, out here, but yeah. not necessarily a cause, cause of concern for this project here. Great. Great. No more chat. All right, no more chats, no more comment from the public. Um, board, any questions for the applicants before we close the public hearing? Uh, we figured out the trees. And the bike. 
the bike so that's the 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 trees and the bike will be a condition as will the uh stormwater reports so i think i yep yep um there's no additional lighting there's no lighting kind of put into this plan that we're aware of that would cause any concern for the neighbors We make a specific decision about the bikes in terms of number of spots and if it needs to be covered, or should we? I think we should. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we don't have that kind of those calculations, that data to say what's the employee base now at uh, Cooley Dick. Eighteen hundred. I think we got like nine hundred and eighty parking spots for the handicap. So I don't know. Where yeah. Are. And I don't believe our zoning talks about, as the council raised, a, a relation between parking for cars and parking for bicycles, right? Um, there is a parking, a bike, bicycle parking requirement based on the number, um, based on the use. Um, I think the issue is more that they're not creating more parking spaces. Um, they are expanding the footprint of the building. I think it's more of an issue of ensuring that the bike storage that was there be brought back um, because that was part of previous permits. And so they need to at least keep that. Um, I'll just pull up the bike um, storage requirement. Sorry. Was, do we know what the bike storage was? Well, it was one of those old school racks that you see in front of elementary schools with about eight spaces in it, but it was under um, a cover, uh, a cement on a gravel patch. Um, so 10, 10, 10 covered spaces. So it would be nice to have more than one spot because that's over by the north entrance. It would be nice to have another covered spot over by, say, the other side of the building, the main entrance. I think that would be, go a long way for, you know, encouraging people to ride bikes there rather than cars, which only helps you in the long run. So the current standard, which was put in place after, I think probably after the last expansion, planning board still required bicycle parking, but the current standard for hospitals is one space per um, thousand square feet of building. But, um, you know, so if you look at, say, this is a 7,000 square foot addition, you could say one space per, per thousand. So seven spaces, um, but it um, sounds like there were some that disappeared anyway. So I would say start with seven at least, yeah. you know, as your. So I would suggest to go with Sam's number, which was maybe 10. You could split them five and five or six and four. Um, but if they're covered, it, that would be great. Is the board's okay with that? If we're concerned that they're not, meeting the threshold that previously existed can be conditioned that we figure out what that threshold was and make sure that it's coming at least up to par plus seven or is that not complicated um i i the so there wasn't a stand this is the standard that was put in place after their last okay. expansion the site plan approved by the planning board i could go back through and look at the decision if it's labeled in there um what you the way you could condition it is to say seven additional spaces from what the board previous conditions were and then they can do the math about you know how much went away from the last planning board decision so that plus seven that sounds good to me okay yeah. and i don't think the that previous plan said they had to be covered but we'd be adding that that they're covered spaces, which goes a long way if you're a bicyclist. Um, and wider slots for bigger paddles. <laughs> <laughs> um, the standard doesn't say yeah. that. <laughs> I've been to uh, <laughs> had the opportunity to go to MGH in Boston quite a few times, and I know it's a different cosmopolitan area, but the number of bikes that they have in the stores they have for them there is really something else um there's a lot a lot of bike traffic someday we'll get there perhaps all right they have medical students <laughs> <laughs> all righty any other suggestions before we close the public hearing questions for the applicant 
Okay, I appreciate your forthrightness and your flexibility to do some of these things. Um, so is there a motion to close the public hearing? Second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of closing the public hearing? Any opposed? Unanimous. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Don't leave yet. We didn't vote. <laughs> it may flip on you all of a sudden. <laughs> those. Um, so we have three conditions, correct? Uh, the, 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 the bicycle situation, about seven above what was previously decided on the last site plan review that are covered. The uh, addition of two trees and the, the end caps of the traffic islands and the providing um, the, the storm maintenance plans to the DPW prior to the building permit. Thank you. How do you, what's that language? Maintenance report, right, because they already have the plan, so they're reporting on the plan. Thanks. All right, I think that's it. Is there a motion? I move to to support the uh, the this project with the three uh, three amendments. Thanks, Sam. I'll second. Thanks, Stacy. So the motions are made and seconded to accept the application with conditions by Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Any discussion? Can I just get clarification? It's did you say two trees in the end caps? Right. Okay. Thanks. So, can I just make clarification? So the are you talking the end cap closest to the um to the new ER? I think any end cap. I think any end cap. Okay. That's, because that's, that, that's our construction uh, access. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure we yep. no. Any, yeah, sorry. Can we say any end cap yeah. or uh, yep. median between parking roads? Yeah, just perfect. to keep it. Thank you. Perfect. And caps can ability of people to cross the street and you know. Yep. All right. Motions are made and seconded and clarified. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? Unanimous. How you guys can go. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Great time. Thank you so much. Eight o'clock, we're doing pretty well. <laughs> Don't shake it. The Maroika, as we said, the Maliokio. All right. So now we will open a, a special permit site plan uh, for two curb cuts by Chris Jacobs at 420 Main Street, Leeds, map ID 11C 55. Um, this is a special permit, so we need to have a super majority, a vote of super majority of five of seven members. So I guess that means five of six members on the board. Carolyn, is that right? Uh, five. Five. Yeah. Still five. So yes, whoever's here, yeah. you know, you need at least five. All right. And the applicant has a presentation for us. Yes, I am not much of a computer guy, so that's why we have uh, our. Carolyn, the director of <laughs> Come on OPS. down. Yes, yeah. There's only like four slides up. So um, when you're ready to open this, or whichever one you want to start, if you want to start with the existing conditions, yeah. and then you go back to this Zoom and you do the screen share. I did bring paper too, if you... <laughs> Those were the days. So back to Zoom. So this is the existing conditions. Now, um, there's a small island. Um, you know, can I point with this? 
there's a small island already right there. Um, so our new proposal is to still keep the two, um, but build a go to Zoom, and then you said, um, you're on the you you wanted to show this, or you wanted to show another one. I have another the proposal. So um, go back to the fold the yellow folder on the lower left um, uh, bottom of the screen. The yellow folder. Sorry. So this has your yeah. documents. So um, you just use the mouse to go over there and just click. I don't know if it'll share the next one. So you're going to have to do stop share and restart again. It's a little clunky. So the next one is proposed. There you go. So that's our proposed. We already. The existing space already has the two, and we're proposing a bigger island to accommodate the new regulations that the building doesn't comply to, I guess. So a bigger island um, complying to all the regulations. Uh, um, we do have a lot of um, deliveries, including tractor trailer trucks, um, which the two would, I would, would assist, you know, in, incoming and outcoming when we got the some delivery trucks there. Um, I can go through this, or I can just show you some photos. Whatever is here. Uh, well, yeah. You know, this is existing. But by and large, your deliveries are smaller box uh, trucks and know, pickup trucks. And we, um, we do have 18 um, trailer trucks that come in and deliver specialty products. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the it, the building was an antique dealer, which had a lot more traffic. It had, you know, it's always had the two. Uh, Interests. Yeah. So I'm just proposing I like to keep the two. Okay. Um, you know, the trailer trucks. And if you're trying to get vehicles out when you got deliveries and such, I just think it, it just makes the flow a lot better. Okay, doke. Um you're you're repaving the parking lot. That's what kind of triggered this. Yeah. And you'll be painting the parking spaces along the side. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're also paving that area back to your your storage canopy structure. Yeah. So with the, the new smaller curb cuts, how do you would you really anticipate for it if a trailer truck needs to get in here? Are they going to kind of well, to be honest, side of the road and then back in? To be honest with you, I'd like to keep it the way it is, but I, I know I can't do that. Um, so, yeah, he's going to have to pull, you know, in by the catering place and back in close to the island. Yeah. Um, and we usually unload into the, the smaller building there. Um, so it just, it would just give us the ability, a little more flexibility of, you know, trailer trucks backing out. And now we can drive out. Um, you know that our zoning ordinance is in a situation like this traditionally allow just one curb cut. Yeah, I'm aware of that. that's why I'm here yeah. just trying to get to. It's uh, and DPW has comments too. I lived up in Leeds for quite a while. That's a that's a tough little intersection there. People are coming down the hill a lot of through traffic. a lot of traffic. They you know the speed. Mile the speed uh, restrictions change right there too. People kind of ignore that coming yeah. the corner. You got that gas station there. People are coming in, going out. Um, uh, I was there today, and that the existing curb cut is a little tricky if people are coming out of there or even slowing down to go in there for sure. I believe at two different 
plans were submitted, one for keeping two curb cuts yep. and one for just one. Can you just clarify if it is just one, you would be closing off the, the entrance we're seeing on the left closest to the storage building and just keeping the one on the right? Yes. Okay. So your real concern, what you're hoping to solve with the two spaces is if a tractor trailer truck is in there, other people can still access the parking lot. Well, it's just not the trailer trucks. We do do truck to trucks, um, lumber trucks, you know, with windows go from the lumber trucks to our trucks. So yeah. a lot of times our trucks will be in the parking spot and then they back up truck to truck back to back yep. and they unload. Mm -hmm. and so the two would just give us the ability to get to our two trucks. Somebody can still come in and go out. Um, it would just give us give options. Yep. There's uh there's no sidewalks along here. There's not a lot of pedestrian activity on this stretch. There's actually a bike path right in front. Uh, a, a bike lane, like a, a bike lane. lane. Yeah, yeah, bike lane. Yeah, which people who are walking use that because yeah. they can really walk on the grass, but. I'm curious what DPW's comments were. Sure. Yeah, I can send them out. <laughs> um, so uh, first, just sort of, it's not something that the city can enforce, but um, they noted that proposed parking should include one ADA compliant parking space with a permanent sign in accordance with um, ADA requirements. So. Um, that's um, just they wanted to note that um, and they requested that all any um, existing and abandoned underground utilities including water sewer and storm drain services to the property should be labeled and sized um, please plan to provide scale bar to facilitate use of digital plans um, uh, Pavement within the right of way shall be two inch base course and two inch top course within the city right of way. Um, trenches should be backfilled with flowable fill. Engineering requests a granite curb detail. And then in response to the request for the second curb cut, DPW recommends that two 15 foot wide one way curb cuts with a three foot return be substituted for the two 24 foot wide two way curb cuts. Um, and also recommends the addition of a five foot wide concrete um, walk, uh, sidewalk, I think they said walkway, but I think they meant sidewalk with granite curb along the frontage. Um, and then plans should include distances between the curb cuts on adjacent properties and show nearby. Um, that's just, um, they wanted updated plans, but related to the request, um, those are the comments. There's another comment um, from the tree warden. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just going to have to go to another window because it came in separately. <laughs> um, Before you go, Carolyn, could yeah. you say that one more time? So the applicant came in suggesting two 24-foot curb cuts, and DPW is recommending 15. Two 15, 15. one ways mm -hmm. so that there would be um, easy circulation and um, looking at this, maybe it makes um, sense to, it might even make sense to slide it because the storage building is sort of right in the way. If you're trying to get a tractor trailer, I don't know how it would make that turn, but There's that a, would be uh, over the telephone pole in the mm -hmm. middle of that island mm -hmm. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, that's what they're recommending two 15 foot wide one ways instead of two 24. How, how wide is it the storage building in the new proposed um it's um it's not dimensioned on the plan like but it looks like 12 or so with the parking space maybe or a little bit more uh-huh yeah no, that's a good guess i can measure it in the dawn but it's not dimensioned so it's the it's not part of the approval, you know. The other thing to note is that the if you see notice the property line, which I think the tree warden noted is 
there's proposed parking in the public right of way. So that would have to be the island would actually have to come further in because the property line is still showing sort of driveway there. So oh, that was another comment. Line. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Wait, I'm sorry, the dotted line is the property? Yes. That's yes. a best guess. Uh, that's a conservative on our side. Well, that's what's being presented. So. <laughs> that's what I presented. Yeah. Right. But I'm no. saying you're presenting that as your property line. So. You can the what they're and DPW is saying um that the the curbing should come all the way to the property line. And not be in the city's right of way. Right. Which makes sense. So that's an existing condition because it looks like those bushes and trees that are well the bushes out front. Yeah, it's definitely a, right, a wide right of way there. Yeah. yeah. The in front of the bigger building, the, the the grass line or the walkway has been established for you know a very long time. Um, the reason the property lines are when the I couldn't find I've seen it once on a drawing. I think it might be from the, when the bank um, did it, but that was a conservative on. Um, side I pushed it back um it literally goes through the middle of my front steps um where I have property line right so if you push it back you know I wouldn't even have access to my building no I'm, I'm talking about the the area you're I'm not talking about pushing the line back I'm talking about the curb curbing right I yeah. know but if you move the curb, you'd be moving it into my sidewalk on the far left. Yeah, I don't think the sidewalk's the concern. The walkway's not the concern. It's the drive and the parking area in the right of way. Cool. My, my concern is that the existing conditions don't appear to be surveyed. So I don't really know that we can tell what we're looking for. Well, that's why I went conservative. If you want to survey, I'd love to survey it because um, I think I own a lot more. I think that might be good in this case. So we know what we're working on. I mean, alternatively, you could. Conservative side. I pushed it more towards mine. And the town has been there numerous of times. Um, I don't know what they were doing there. Yeah, um, but, but they were <clears throat> surveyed, and I did talk to them. And at one point, I did see I, it might have been from the bank, and there was a line drawn. I remember because they went right to my front steps. You know. Well, somehow I'm a little confused, and then we have two sets of property lines here: the one that go through your front steps, and the one that's right out by the street, just a couple of feet away from the the proposed granite curbing. Or the grant curbing that exists. The grant curbing to that proposed property. Uh, I'm just more concerned that the far left curb, um, you know, I'd lose my my walkway. I mean, Carolyn, it has to be a requirement of ours to have like a professionally surveyed base plan for. Not for a project this size. Okay. The, the applicant is responsible for submitting what they deem to be their property boundaries this is what they submitted if there's a question on the applicant's side about where the property line is there are two I, I would say there's two options one is you know you could continue this and wait till survey is done or um just say base your decision on this but have a condition saying um you know the condition could say that the parking area for the property owner has to be entirely within their lot line. So if they want to submit a survey showing that their lot line is a little bit different than this, because you know it's your approval would still stand. They just then have new information yeah, showing yeah. this is our survey. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking that the second the second curb cut located near the storage building isn't even feasible if that's the lot line and the curbing has to go up. Yeah.
Yeah. It's like we're really disincentivizing people to improve their properties because of it's just like normal New England haywire, uh, you know, lines on maps don't match reality. It seems insane to me, honestly. He's trying I to make this better. The property was and, in. Well, I, I mean, that's a fuzzy question. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't see, like, right now he has a gravel pad where people park and he wants to make it blacktop and draw lines on it. So suddenly it's like this big problem. Right. Well, I think, no, I think the issue is the two curb cuts, right? So if it were just but now one. it's all one huge curb cut and there's no pedestrians. I don't see this as such an issue. I see this, I don't know about the rule about the island around the the pole, honestly, but I fail to see how this is improving things. This is creating a really dangerous situation where semis are going to be parked in a bike lane, trying to back into an impossible parking lot. It just seems like a disaster waiting to happen. So I don't, I don't quite see what we're it doing to improve difficult. the public safety here. It's a very long and narrow park. So, right. Uh, yeah. So it it's, does have its challenges. Yep. And I could just see a one curb cut being a, a, a big issue. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't, I'm not forcing you to go get a survey, which is going to be obviously an expense. But maybe it's in your best interest to just pause this, come back the next time and you know do a survey. We are gonna most likely agree with DPW with the 15, 15 feet one directional. Uh, uh, well, is that a recommendation or is that a, uh, I have to do? Because that still doesn't fix my um, narrow lot with, deliveries and be able to get in and out no it was a very very different use on that property for the longest time when mr spire just ran a small antique business mm -hmm. and now you're you're a very different kind of use having tractor trips use it um and i'm sure the the nature of the lot as david suggested kind of work for that the way it is now Right, because yeah. there was more flexibility for a tractor trailer truck. Yeah, no, we have the way it is now, it's it works very well. In this design, I was under the impression it was the only way that we could go ahead and pay parking. I'd like to keep it just the way it is. Yeah. Pave it and keep it the way it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's your relationship with like with Seth minus catering? Oh, uh, we talk. But yeah, I mean, to me, if I was trying to get a semi into this lot, maybe like pulling into his wide open curb cut and backing up to your property line would be the way to go for mm -hmm. those large deliveries. Uh, they have to get to the, the like the small building. So, um, you know, when you're unloading the, you, the closer you are, obviously, you know, the better. Yeah. Asking what? trucks to have to stop on a state highway and back into a into a fourteen, you know, into a fifteen foot wide curb cut, it's not even possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying, like, right, they would have to the Seth Myers. Seth, he's got a telephone pole too, right in front of his building. Yeah. But after the telephone pole, it's all pavement in front of his building and to mine. So they do. I mean, the uh, salt trucks parked there the way it is now, the police parked there the way it is now. Um, but so, once he pays his lot, he's going to be in trouble too. Yeah, he is. Um, but he's, he's, he doesn't have to buy his big trucks going in now. He has delivery trucks, but damn, you know. Yeah, I just, I don't really see how a, how a semi can safely get into this property with a, even with the 24 even with the 24 yeah i think to approve i mean we're still it's sort of not our normal process i guess but for, for me to be to able to approve it i would need to see the geometry lines of the kind of trucks you're thinking of and how you envision them and there are standard circles and curves and all the consultants who just left the room know how to draw them. You know, well, I, I, I mean, I think was, there's, yeah. you have that stuff. Yeah. I think that would be very helpful. And, uh, I don't know what other people think about the property line and the parking and stuff, but well, yeah, I mean, the double curve is another issue. The, uh, you know, it gives the ability for a trailer truck to 
and the wide, not the smaller, to drive in and drive out. I don't see how. Uh, could I just make a suggestion that, you know, there's also, you know, the, the, the sort of standard that you're designing for. If a tractor trailer is delivering once a week, does mm -hmm. it make sense to approve a permit or design something for a once a week event where they could just pull up on Route 9, just like they have to do on Main Street in Florence, downtown, wherever, there's not a parking lot and these trucks are delivering. So I think the my recommendation would be to un, to look at what sort of the normal everyday use would be and not the exceptional use of a once a week or once a month delivery. Well, that's what we asked the applicant and he showed us a couple of pictures of this tractor trailer truck. So right, they've designed it to repetitive visit mm -hmm. by tractor trailer trucks. Um, and, and I totally agree with you. Um, tractor trailers can figure out other ways to drop load, you know. Um, well, the side of the road is the bike path. Right, and even as a bicyclist, we understand that sometimes those bike paths are taken up. Nowadays, our friends from uh, Amazon and Prime use our bike lanes all the time. So it's unfortunate, but um that's what happens on a on a road like that. Well the bike lane is right behind that, isn't it? Is no, it's the bike path. The, there's the bike path behind it yeah. there's a bike lane. Right, there's a bike lane, but there's a bike down. Yeah. But it's you know marked bike. Right? Yeah. Um and what's the frequency that the you have deliveries? Um it varies with um the days, but I mean if I was gonna you know, it's not always a tractor trailer. It's usually sometimes half the size of a tractor trailer. Um, I don't know, twice a month. And then we've got um, paper delivery, you know, um, for printers and all that with those trucks. Those WB Mason and whatnot. W. Well, trucks, yeah. Um, are they, definitely yeah. weekly. Yeah. Right. Um, but they can come in okay and they can. I mean, if we're parking on the road, we definitely would be in the truck. Yeah, I mean, even a box truck, a W Mason or whatever. I mean, what's scaling on the drawings is like it's an eight foot wide paved area between the sidewalk and the new island. Like, I think that stuff at the very least has to be dimensioned, doesn't have to all scale correctly and well, beam I, or whatever. It's just scale. Right. I'm just saying, I don't think this drawing is doing it. I'm not, I think it could, you know, there's somewhere where it could, there's some version of this that I could be interested in improving. I don't know about other people, but I don't think it's here today. I don't really understand what the island, and that's in our zoning, like... No, they, they he has submitted two options, one with just one curb opening. No, I know. And the other with... Well, but I like, was under the impression that I could not have an open front. It had to right. have two, one or two curb cuts you couldn't have. Right. So that's why I gave the proposal that I did, because that's what I was told that I could only do. So if I had my choice, I would just keep it the way it was. Correct. And and the reason we asked for islands and only one curb cut is to stop all of this random coming in and pulling out of different areas along that wide width of the street. So that when other traffic, other car traffic can see, okay, there's a driveway up ahead a car is going to be going in and coming out of there. Or a and, cyclist. Or a cyclist. Right. Instead of, whoops, here comes this one, coming in here, here goes that one. Right, so we this oh. huge tractor trailer, and now there's a car coming out from behind it and pulling out that you're not expecting, or if you're coming from the opposite direction, you might not even be able to see with the angles there. I mean, it's all... I think I think a, something that might work for you is, and I, I know when you get two curb cuts closer to each other, people get annoyed by that too, but if you had an... Uh, one in to the east of your pole, so within where your island is shown now, go in that way and come out kind of where you're showing the other one, and then you could back up towards your other buildings. And but it wouldn't, it would be sort of a little cul de sac, you know, like a little dead end bit to access. It's like a drive to access your buildings because I think you're you're getting to this point where you the geometry is not going to work between the gas valve and your sidewalk. And the turning radius of the trucks, like it's not going to work. I think. No, I, I, I only do this because I was told this is the only way we could possibly pay our driver. 
Yeah, right. Then, so, and unfortunately, uh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I do it. This, this is the bare minimum that I thought that would work. Yeah. For everybody. And, you know, the last thing we want to start trailers back in, you know, now. Right. Right. But it, but again, it's our concern to look out for everyone in the city and everyone using Route 9 and the gas station. And what the DPW is saying is what you proposed with uh, the driveways, that 24 feet, again, provides too much room for coming and going. That's why we like to see it just 15 feet. Um, so it, it's really about public safety at this point. Yeah, granted, if if you didn't pave your driveway, you could just keep going as business as usual. Um, that's kind of a loophole well, for sure. But you know, if I knew that, because when I went when I started this whole thing, I asked through the all the proper channels, do I need a permit? And they said no. So and then we started the process, and the somebody at the some lady at the EDW said you need a trench permit if you put a shovel in the ground. So we got the trench permit already a year ago to do replace the driveway just the way it was. Uh, we ran into um, some underground issues. Yep. Um, so it delayed it. So we had to redo the trench permit. And that's how we ended up here. Yep. So if somebody at the beginning stage, I, I would have just patched the holes that were a safety issue. Um and then done with it. But now we're here and you know this is a this is a huge investment for me now. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate that and we appreciate that you're trying to improve uh, the lot here in Northampton. That's great. Um but uh, we have to kind of stick by our so regulation. Yeah. Uh, there uh, has to be some kind of rule exceptions. It's an existing lot that um, has been there for over 100 years. But on, with very different traffic patterns. Very different traffic patterns. Um, Do you need to see any plans? You can get a lot more traffic. Do you want to continue? Uh, you know, I got less, but to bigger. Yep. Yep. I don't think we have what we need to move forward on this tonight. How does that work? Do we can we continue or yeah, you can make a motion to continue and ask for uh, more information, maybe a, um an adjustment that takes, you know, a lot maybe allows for that loop, okay. the one way loop. I mean, I'm unclear if that's approvable for other by others, but do you feel like and he can talk to you to get some yeah. input mm -hmm. on where to what go with this? The DPW recommends is that like we have to do it. Um, the plan board ultimately makes the determination, but they rely on the city engineer for recommendations, but it just depends on the situation. But it sounds like, I mean, the board needs, you can make a decision either tonight, or if you feel like you'd like more information, you can make um, a motion to continue so that more information can be gathered and, you know, um, and you would want to express sort of the things you would be looking for in the next meeting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I'd like to confirm where this property line is. And I think that can only be done by a professional surveyor. Um, and I think that's going to, you know, depending on where that property line is, because DPW wants you to bring your curbing down to that line. I mean, that may cut off any possibility of having a curb cut to the left side of your storage building because you just won't have enough area. But I, if, if I, the surveyor I, finds that your property line is closer to North Main Street, that's very good for you. Yeah, I've, I've, I've done what a surveyor would do and go through the 100-year um, yep. oh, space and um, And it's very, it's very vague. Right. Um, this is why you don't want a professional doing it because I I get very hesitant when you're like, oh well, I was conservative, so I just moved the line a little bit this way or that way. Like I don't. That, that well, I moved it towards my. No, I understand that, <laughs> but I don't like that you're moving the line. Yeah. I don't well, know. I would be very reluctant to ask him to just put a curb cut on an imaginary line that someone drew 100 years ago, just because it's on a drawing somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how. Property records work though. 
fine, but I just think okay. it's stupid. I mean, there's no benefit to the public of putting the curb on that dashed line, no matter if it's six inches one way or the other. It doesn't help anybody. We're talking about a grandfather condition. Like, I understand DBW wants the curb to be on a dashed line, but I don't see that it actually helps anybody here one way or the other. So that's not the issue for you, but the, there it sounds like there are other issues. So yeah, I have other issues with this, but I don't think that I, I don't think I don't see that a professional surveyor saying, okay, actually put the curve eight inches that way changes the nature of the problem here. The nature of the problem is trucks on a very fast moving highway, bike lane, turning radii, that stuff. But if that's the case, you should just put the dark that's line saying. all the way up yeah. to the top. Right, I mean, you should just put the dark line all the way up, and then you get some more room into the street and move you everything. Have to solve the issue of like turning around an actual pole that exists in real life, okay, and a gas valve, like those things actually exist, and that's the real crux of the issue here. And the bicyclists exist, <laughs> and like the cars on Route Nine exist. Um, I would not enforce a, putting a curb on a on a dash line. I, I don't. That's a DPW recommendation that I wouldn't. And I so, what along. about the, guys, we'll what that's about the deep. fifteen? What about the right. one-way loop? Do you I want to, to explore yeah. that? So, redrawing that, you know, I don't, I don't think a truck can make a fifteen-foot wide, two fifteen-foot wide openings. Well, and it doesn't make sense for us to approve plans that aren't actually no, we're not going to work. We're going to give him some place to go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I want the equivalent of what we get from the fire department sometimes where we're getting little maps that show like, okay, here's the way that this can come in so we can actually see those lines because it's not going to help you if we say, okay, here we're going to sign off on these plans, but it doesn't actually do what you think it's going to do to allow trucks to get in there. And it may be that what we ultimately approve doesn't allow trucks to get in there, but we should be upfront about that. But to approve something that's not going to allow and say that it will is pointless for everybody involved. So... That's what I want to see. I mean, I would like to see property lines, but I'm more concerned about, I don't think that I'm not comfortable with two curb cuts with two-way traffic out of both. That just, the whole idea of limiting it to one curb cut is to promote safety and two curb cuts with, on a, at an odd intersection on an odd lot with no directional flow to me does not feel safe. So I'd like to see what that, one directional traffic flow would look like and if it can actually accommodate the kinds of vehicles you're saying are coming through. I just, the gas station right next to me has two curb cuts, 25 feet apart. The next commercial spot has the same thing. The next commercial spot has the same thing. The next commercial spot has the same thing. All the way to the sky, he says. Yep. Yep. And, you and that's, go the other way. that's the way development used to happen. And we found over time that that was really dangerous for traffic patterns. So that's why the ordinance has changed, residential areas and commercial areas. Is, is so, it possible to make it so that, they, you know, I, I don't know much about roads and stuff, but can you, like there's certain, like these roundabouts that like the tractor trailers do drive over the edge and then sort of design right like a device yeah like a mm -hmm. mountable thing is that is that a solution to this that you could have it's a, 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 a mountable yeah, mountable it's a gas valve and a trap and an electric pole I mean, to me yeah, i think what's right i'm just no that's actually a good right. idea yeah. I'm I, I was told it had to be a granite curve well, they can still be a mountable granite curb. I think the issue, though, is it doesn't necessarily have to be in that configuration, I could think, is what more work needs to be done because it could be pulled back that way to make the 15 feet, and then you're further away from the pole, and then maybe that inner curb could be mountable so that the tractor do, trailer can come around. You could also do a 15-foot curb cut, but the radius on the westernmost could be a bit bigger radius to allow people to make that turn uh, in there. And a lot of people, look, there's a lot of facilities also that say we can accommodate 30 foot truck, but we can't accommodate a 65 or whatever. I mean, that I'm not saying you, I'm not telling you, you have to do one or the other, but the way you get to that answer is by seeing what actually works on the site. So, so it sounds like a yeah, turning that. template with a curve, uh, a one way direction for. It sounds like, it, but be. it sounds like 24 foot curb cuts give a much more flexibility. So, but are we committed to um, agreeing with the DPW's recommendation of 15? Well, could you have one be 24 and one, like, let's say the entrance is 24, but the 
exit is is narrower like it allows you to if we're going to continue can we get let's give him the flexibility yeah. to design this in a way that what works with the information that we're looking for here yeah but i think that's a big thing if we're going to say sorry it's got to be 15 feet then he's got to design with 15 feet curb cuts that's a whole different thing than designing with 24. Right, so we don't want him to come back with all this work on the turning radius. Should we and vote on whether to tell him fifteen or twenty-four. Well, well, that's what that's why I was yeah, asking. I, I, is yeah, 20, is twenty-four? Yeah, that's what it's is really twenty-four on an entrance okay, and fifteen on the exit. Uh, again, I'm. Well, I'm you're, what you're, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. about drivable when you can drive over whatever you call that a drivable curve would solve a lot of the problem. And all so right, well then maybe go with the fifth. What's Let's go with the ideal of the 15 with the drivable and come back with the plans. We'd love to see it. Right. So I would recommend we support the DPW and and agree to that. We want to see a 15 foot curb cut. I've never seen a drivable uh, granite curb before. Is that it's slant based, it's not yeah. vertical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got a 45. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Google will show you a lot of examples. Yeah. For for some, my uh, regular granite is, is mounted. <laughs> right. Yeah, just that gas valve. We want to protect that gas valve or relocate it somehow. That will be another three years in the making. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the gas valve, it, actually, you can drive over it. It's, you know, it's, 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 um, it's fine to drive over it. It's down, you know. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever. Yeah. We probably don't want to see that on the plan, though. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, it looks like what we're going to ask you is to come back with revised plans and we could continue this for another month. I don't know how much time you need for that. It's, the next meeting is August 24th. And then the one after that is September 14th. So, uh, uh, was it a 16 foot curb cut? 15. 15 foot. <laughs> and Carolyn will be able to do with mount, you with the key part is mount, mount, it sounds like the mountable curve, curve. <laughs> granite curve yeah yeah that would solve a lot of problems um and then just put cobbles in your islands so you can just, like, just drive over the entire island <laughs> although yeah is that so we do have about four items on the august 24th agenda um so if i would recommend if you're going to do 24th maybe towards the end of the agenda um, or, my or the board okay. is buried right now, so it's going to be hard for me to do so all September. This. Okay, September. September fourteenth would be the date, so you could. The nothing is scheduled yet for that yeah. date. Yeah, I'd be on the first. So, did we agree then also that we're not asking him to come back with a uh, stamp survey, uh, a recent stamp survey, to show that front line by the city easement? Yeah, we're not asking that. I mean, he can he can come up with whatever line he's going to come that, and the city might say that's not. We don't agree with it, but we don't. I'd recommend I putting the lines close to Northern yeah, Main Street. That's that line. Line. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, well, that's 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 lines on the plan. Yep. Yep. You do have to sign. <laughs> Well, okay, so wait, September fourteenth, seven p.m. Seven p.m. Is there a motion? Yep. I'm so continue this uh project on north main street uh till september 14th that's 7 p.m 7 p.m okay seconded all right so the motion has been made to continue the application by chris jacobs at 420 north main street until september at 7 p.m i'm sorry what was that date 14th 14. september 14th any discussion so a 15 foot right um both ways and a drivable curve right but to, to my my line <laughs> yes yes wherever you want to put that line but i think we're suggesting um in entrance one way exit the other way be as precise not as not in and out yeah, one and, way in, one yeah. and right. i think if you can show the movement of the volume Pretty much the, 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 the turning the, geometry, the, the turning yeah. geometry, yeah. Your, your life will be easier. It was. And are there any exceptions about keeping one twenty-four, like the the one by the catering place? 
Probably so. The DPW recommended that they both go to 15 feet. So uh, that's pretty standard now in the city. Okay. All right. Well, as long as we drive over curb, then. Yep. We're good. All right. Thanks for your. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. Oh, did we vote? No. On the continuation. Thank you. All in favor? <laughs> Great. Any opposed? Thanks. Unanimous. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. <laughs> we'll see you in a couple months. All right. We'll, we'll get that. Good old. Long as by winter, <laughs> we'll be doing good. All right. Thank you again, there. Great. Great. Thanks. Bye bye now. Well, thanks for your patience out there. Mm -hmm. um, we're about to open our last hearing which was scheduled for 750. It's a special permit major site plan for a seven unit residential construction and a reduced buffer by Dufresne LLC um, at a site of 67 Park Street, Florence, map ID 23A-31. And it's a special permit, the super majority vote again, five of seven members. Uh, welcome to the applicants. No. Let me just get these files open real quick. You need any help with that yellow folder thingy? We'll see. I think I got it, but never know. All right. I'm just going to open them all so that they're all loaded already. All right. Good evening, Rebecca Lee with Arlovec Associates located at 40 School Street in Westfield here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Max Hebert, um, to present the proposed multifamily development at 67 Park Street. I'm also accompanied by the architect, Mr. Daniel Bonham, and we'll jump right into it. So this is the existing conditions plan. Um, the current property has a single um, family residence uh, building with an associated gravel driveway. Uh, majority of the lot has been cleared of mature vegetation. Um, however, there are some trees that go around the perimeter um, and we can you know, discuss the tree replacement uh, program after we present the drawings. Um, our property is located within the Florence Village General District. Um, we are abutting the URB Residential District that's represented here by that dark, um, bold line. The VFW is uh, to the north of the property, and then there's a uh, single family residence to the, to the south. Okay. So this is a demolition plan. Um, we are proposing to demolish a portion of the building to accommodate the new addition. Um, and we're also proposing to demolish the trees within um, the limit of work, as well as some um, a portion of the sidewalk and obviously a part of Park Street in order to accommodate the new utility connections. So this is the site layout. Um, <clears throat> it's intended to um, keep within the characteristics of the neighborhood. So this is a um, you know multifamily development uh, with seven units. So the existing building will have an addition um, to the north, and there will be two units within this one structure. There will also be an additional three new structures. Two of the structures will have um, two units and one will have one. Um, these are two story structures and the square footage is approximately around 780 square feet per level per unit. Um, the access drive come total, yeah. Um, the main entrance is obviously off of Park Street. 
So it's got that main drive aisle that goes extends all the way back to the um, back of the property. There are two parking spaces per unit, so a total of 14 spaces. Um, how wide is it whereabouts right here? Everywhere. Everywhere. It is dimension. It's hard to see. Yeah. It's see yeah. 15, no, it's okay. 15 feet between the kind of in. end caps. That's Six, a... Yeah, 16 at the entrance. Um, and then we try to maximize it, you know, throughout. So 1818, that's the requirement for um, perpendicular parking. And then where, you know, the islands kind of bump out, it's a little bit less at 15.2. 15 looks like it's the minimum dimension there. What's that patch on the 15 foot wide part? Right so here? Yeah, the little bump out this is um so this is going to be a landscaped area with a couple of shrubs and then this is a um concrete pad that will have you'll see on the architectural drawings it will have um kind of like a, a it's, it's a storage bin um yeah for refuse or, yeah, yeah. Uh, it could, could be trash or it could be um a bicycle or a few bicycles and, and, and. Yep. Okay. And then these are the um, walkways to each of the units. So, what material is that? Is that just like so in between here, this is mulch, um, just because it's so narrow. Um, we did uh, loam and seed majority of the property, but this this hatch that you see here, the dashed line, that is represents mulch, and you'll see that. Um, on future plans as well and i guess the walkway to the door oh right here yeah. these are like stones so these are like slate stones with um like gravel um like fill in right yeah gravel in between okay Thank you. So this is the grading plan here. Um, the existing topography is fairly flat. So we did have to raise it slightly um, towards the middle of the property there to direct the runoff towards the two catch basins that are located on the west and east side of the property. And then this is the drainage um, and utilities plan. So for drainage, as I mentioned, um, we have a high point um, down the middle of the property, which conveys and directs the runoff towards those two catch basins. And then we have um, yard drains around the perimeter of the property and with low points to collect any additional runoff. Everything gets sent through a proprietary sedimentation device which treats the runoff before going into this um, very long <laughs> uh, subsurface infiltration basin. And then for other utilities, we have electric coming off of Park Street. We will have to relocate that utility pole. And um, I believe discussions have been had with the utility provider just as a you know preemptive measure. Um, and then we have a new domestic water service tying into the main on Park Street that will service and be sized for all of these on the property, as well as a new uh, sewer service. So, this one here? Yeah. Okay. It's what do you mean by fails? Like if someone's not maintaining it and there's it's run off, where did it where did it go? So we are submitting a, a long-term operations and maintenance plan with the stormwater report, and that will also be filed with the decision um, to kind of keep the the applicant and the owner um, you know keep his word basically to maintain the drainage system. Um, for some reason, if it were to completely be filled with sedimentation, um, there is curbing around the property. So it would most likely be directed to Park Street, but we don't foresee that happening. I, mean, we just had a, I, I say that because we just had a 
huge hospital talk about they haven't filed the report since 2012 or 2016. And no one seems to maintain these watching these things and they're okay. The big thing from very small sites. I just think that like I get my point is the city needs to make sure that we are if like when we're okaying these projects, we need to maybe put some sort of cost, like an extra cost on there to truly maintain them because it could be a problem for the city and the industry. So um, I don't disagree that there are, you know, um, applicants that don't follow through and particularly end users. Um, the one, if I believe I heard correctly from Cooley Dickinson is that um, when they realized they weren't getting their reduction in the stormwater fee, they um, um, started to put pull those things together because that was sort of the hook. They said, wait a second, we're not getting our... Um, but I don't know when the fee reduction kicked in because that was sort of new from you know that era. In this case, so there's that piece one it will probably also be more um, readily felt by residential property owners versus a big in, um, you know, um, institution like Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Um, that's one piece. The other is um, sometimes when, because I think these are gonna be condominiums, um, when sales happen, um, and um, buyers are looking to see, you know, what's happening. That's when it, it may come to light. Well, wait a second, this hasn't been, you know, maintained. So it might be a slightly different situation. Yeah. And the other thing is we're just seeing more and more of these underground retention systems yeah. because of our promotion of it, right? And there's not enough surface area left anymore to accept all that water. So... But the other piece about this is in Florence Center in this area, it's particularly sandy. So it's good soils for infiltration. Not every place like on North Elm, or, but where Cooley is, that's not really the case there. So that's a different, so, so their detention pond functions very differently than this. There was a um, just back at the new mid Wifery um, yep. project on the other side of this property line, same thing. They have infiltration there because the soils are so um, conducive to that. So that's what also why you're seeing it here. Okay. Well, I'm interested in why did you orient the uh, buildings to the south rather than flipping them and orient them to the north and deal with the telephone pole and perhaps save that big copper beach? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, we can talk about that now, or do you want to table it till the end of the presentation and go through all the architecturals first, or it's whatever? Well, no, if you just have a quick answer to that, yeah. So, yeah, so um, based on the location of the existing structure and how dimensionally how the property is laid out, um, it just makes sense to come in from the southern side. Additionally, you have the VFW to the north of the property, and then you have a residential property to the south. So if you stacked up those buildings kind of along the south side, it gives, it limits the privacy for, you know, the new residents as well as the neighboring residents. So um, the option was looked at, however, it was vetted out early on in the, the design process. Thanks. Zoning setback was an issue as well. Um, well, regardless. For this, for this district, it's a zero um, foot side yard setback. However, um, with the transitional buffer, it's a 20 foot setback. So yeah, um, that would be an issue as well. Okay. And then this is the site landscaping plan. Um, I, it's probably really hard to see on the screen here, <laughs> but we do have, we're proposing some um, shade trees in the front, four shade trees. We've kind of got trees scattered around the property where we can squeeze them in. It's a very tight site and we have a lot of utilities. So we also have to be kind of aware 
um, as to not plant trees directly on top of um, other utilities. We've got uh, intermittent, like, uh, you know, mulched and uh, bushes, shrubs in between units at the ends of the, um, the bump outs here. And then there's more towards the backside of the property. Okay, while you're on the planting plan, we think there's a little discrepancy. And I don't know if you were notified of that. Some of we, um, you said that there, there would be a replacement totaling 38 inches. Yeah, so I believe um, on the plan that we show, um it, there's required 73 inch caliper this is based off of the initial um field survey that our field crew did they are not arborist by any means um we did not have the existing tree inventory done by the time we issued the drawings we got it done like right afterwards so i have been in contact with carolyn we did get the arborist to to submit that tree existing tree um assessment so now we have an accurate um you know total caliper and assessment so we can update that number <laughs> Um, and now I will turn it over to Dan to go through the architectural um, elevations and renderings. Did you want to start? Yeah, that's good. Um, uh, thanks to the board. Um, good to see some familiar faces uh, from my previous uh, presentations. Um, here's a view from the south, uh, sorry, from the southwest corner, um, kind of middle of the street looking up. And the form you see in the front there is the existing house, which we are maintaining, um, and the kind of a sunroom uh, immediately closest to us. We're going to add a, we'd like to add a porch on the front, um, as the existing house will be one residential unit. And then where you see the kind of zag in the roof there, that's the addition on the back, which is uh, a second unit um, immediately to the rear. Um, what we've done throughout the site is um, a series of duplexes, one being the existing house with a, an addition to it, then two more buildings that are uh, uh, also duplexes and then a, a single family at the back. Um, so you can see that some of the, um, the units as you go back in the site there. Um, here's an overall elevation and the line work doesn't look as good on the screen as it does when it's printed, but this would be a Southern elevation with the plan um, on the bottom and the elevation on the on the top there. Can you zoom into the elevation a little bit? Maybe sure. Uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. No idea how to do this. Uh, Okay. There we go. I found the plus button. Um, Are you changing the pitch on the existing house, the roof line, or is that on just the back? Like... Yeah, we have a dormer on the back. Yeah, but not the. I mean, that not rendering the... looks like it's a little bit um, uh, steeper pitch than the existing. It shouldn't be. Okay. No, we have double checked that. Okay. Um, I thought it was steeper than yeah. it looked on site as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that has to do with the way it's articulated now with this kind of band that uh -huh. comes around. Okay. Um, and also we're eliminating the, the chimney. chimney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks like it flattens uh, it out a little bit. What's, what's the thing that... Well, that allows us to avoid uh, um, fire suppression. So they're treated as, as uh, two family homes rather than um as a larger structure and then there's kind of like a, a thin band in between buildings that cuts out is that like a storage ship? yeah so um what we did was we're, we decided to do carports instead of garages so and use the top of the carport as a a deck uh off the second level um so you can see uh here um this car would be you know approximately two-thirds under the carport 
And then we have access, a bulkhead access into the basement of each unit in this piece that comes out. And then a small storage bin, which could take a couple of hanging bikes or a kayak or um, some refuse, something like that. That's an enclosure. Yep. And I, I can't quite see that detail. The bulkhead is in the front of the building by the carport. Yeah, the bulkhead is. Um, here, so we'll have a sliding door, uh, a barn door uh, on the side here, and then you can walk down the stairs to uh, an exterior door at the landing of the stairs to the basement. Probably some storage in that uh, stairwell as well. And then just, you know, we, we added an egress window um, for the basement in the back, but we're not building that out currently. Um, give flexibility to future tenants. What's the depth of the stormwater uh, retention chambers relative to the what in the basement? Uh, well, it's it's it has to be ten feet away from the foundation. That's a requirement for the Massachusetts Stormwater Handbook. Um, so they're more concerned with the horizontal distance versus you know vertical. Um, so we have maintained that ten foot. Um, separation, the elevations of the stormwater infil infiltration system are on the plans. Well, maybe the bottom of the chamber is six feet down. Yeah. Your basement is 10 feet down, something like that. Something like that, yeah. but it's far enough away to where the infiltration will affect the foundation design. Type a soil. Excuse me. Yeah, there they we did a couple three test pits um in the vicinity of where the subsurface infiltration system can go, and it was the best type of soil you could have nice sand, um, great for infiltration. Um, I'll just continue through here. Um Here's this uh, where you see my cursor now. This is the new elevation from the street, uh, so facing west. So you see the the stepped back um, larger um, form of the addition, um, keeping in character with you know other residential houses, two and three story, um, well two stories with the gable uh, along the street, and then also to north. It's steps up obviously considerably to the VFW. So it's sort of starting to change scale there and get a bit larger. Um, you could have mimicked that VFW roof. I, we considered it, yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so those are the presentation um, drawings or architecturals. Um, so yeah, so that concludes our presentation. We have received a couple of comments from Carolyn, um, with some input from the tree warden, and we've also just received DPW comments, um, later this afternoon. If it pleases the board, I can go through those comments and how we, um, are addressing them or plan to address them. Okay. So I will start out with... What was that? Me, oh. <laughs> um, so I'll start out with Carolyn's comments uh, for the lighting. So the I didn't see any cut sheets for the BOL1 and WS1. We'll need those. Those fixtures are showing far in excess of allowed illumination levels in the district, five foot candles max. Um, the ARE meets the criteria, but I am wondering why they need to be 16 foot mounting heights. Could you swap these out for bollards instead so that the glare doesn't spill over the fence? Do you need the BOL anyway? Perhaps eliminate those and put them along the driveway, then drop the illumination, illumination levels for WS1. So the um, BOLs were eliminated. I can show you the revised photometric plan. We were trying to um, do all the lighting with the bollards 
and we just couldn't get quite enough light out into the driveway. We felt we wanted to have that fairly well illuminated. Um, so, and and the two together made too much light, the bollards and the area lights. So what we did in the end was we we just have area lights um, uh, along the south, um, illuminating the actual driveway, and then the areas around the building are illuminated with the, the wall packs. Um, what do you mean by the twelve foot mountain height? It looks like so the well, so the the existing light fixture, I was not able to swap out, but I was able to get the bottom of the shade down to fifteen feet with what we had selected. Um, we're open to looking for another option. Um, twelve feet, I think, is, is certainly reasonable, uh, but at this time, that's that's where, in order to get the illumination levels that we need at, uh, you know, the five at at grade and have that be fairly consistent. Um, we we just didn't have enough quite enough time to, to source that and we love to show that. That's along the fence line you're saying is 12 foot uh the um, AREs. The the bottom of the shade is at 15 feet currently. Along the fence line. Yeah. Yeah. This is like it says 12 mm -hmm. Um what about a like the a lamp, the post is twelve feet. That's mounting height says twelve. So the uh, the issue is the post is twelve feet, but then it has a gooseneck. Yeah, I can I can so, share details. What if you put a, the gooseneck just on the post of the fence? Yeah, we probably could do that. Yeah. Or even a different type of fixture just mounted to the fence. Yeah. Right. So that it doesn't come up over. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be. Well, that's um, the certainly doable. Um, it would probably be a smaller fixture and there would be more of them, but that would be fine. Um, I mean, it's up to the board, but I just think, I feel like yeah. along that fence line, if it's up over, I think it'll... Yeah, it's not a restaurant out there. It's a driveway. Um, yeah. People come in when it's dark, they have their headlights on. When they leave, they have their headlights on. It's They're not out there playing ball, I don't think. So um, I think less is more in this situation for sure. What, um, can you look back at the site plan? So yeah. remind us what the extent of the fence is along the south there. Uh, oh, you want the site plan? There's an existing fence by all the different abutters at this point, correct? Some in better shape than others? Yes. And you're, you're recommending putting a fence around all three sides, a new fence, and how tall is it? Uh, the fence, I believe, was six feet. Let me just verify. So proposed six foot high wooden privacy fence um, along the south side. Um, while you're at that location, it's stopped short of the front lot line, correct? I forgot to check that. Yes, it, it stops right here. Yep. Okay, so it can't be within five feet of the front lot line. On that east side, you can put the fence right up against their existing fence. Uh, that's the plan, yes. Just to be, you know, fluid with the new fence. <laughs> That's the whole. Um, so yeah, six foot uh tall privacy. And I actually have some photos too that we were tossing around for so I'm I'm sorry, but I I took us away from the lighting discussion. Okay. Lighting. Um <laughs> sure. Let's let's fo focus on that. Sure, first. sure. So we have the um fiberless at grade everywhere currently. I think we we would definitely be willing to pursue other options for the area lighting or the, the, the driveway light um, that's you know below the top of the fence basically. I think that's why we're going to this about the time of the lighting where the plan that's shown doesn't exactly do what we're asking. We don't know exactly what the picture is going to be, but in the end, like it's not the fixture in one or three of our three like inside criteria. 
You mean the, what the fixture looks like? Yeah. I, I mean, as long as there's, you know, no glare, which, ha which is if the lamp is recessed within the, right. and, and that it meets the light levels, the, the style of okay. the fixture okay. is not um, typically what you're, you know, concerned with. So at this situation, we usually let staff kind of work with the applicant to finalize that. And Okay, great. Um, anything more about uh, the lay the architectural design, the elevations? Yeah, okay, thanks. Do you want me to move on with Continue. You? Okay. Uh, so next comment, sidewalk must be five foot wide cement concrete with granite along the frontage. This has to be replaced and come up to the current code. Uh, our response is understood. The plans will be revised accordingly. And then the last comment from Carolyn here is in regarding the trees. Um, it is not clear that tree three, four, seven are at imminent hazard and therefore don't count toward tree replacement. Please have Charles confirm that these are hazard trees. And um, she listed three that she considered under the replacement program. So looking at the tree assessment here, there were some that were labeled as an imminent hazard, and then there were some that were labeled as probable. So I think that's where um, kind of the gray area we get into. Um, so we did ask for additional clarification from our ar arborist, and um, he provided the, the following response here. So um, there's 13 trees total, just you know, so you guys know, and five of them are deemed imminent, so I won't be discussing those. Um, the trees that are listed as probable, tree number one has two leaders attached at a weak crotch connection. The tree had a third leader that previously failed. Um, I actually can probably pull up the assessment so that you can... Aren't there 14 trees that were evaluated? Um, there's a large, I think the large beach is number 14, at least that's what I have. I think <clears> so the way that yes. the arborist identified that there were some that were imminent hazards, so those wouldn't count towards replacement. Okay. I will add, so as you're going through this, yeah. just lumping in Rich Parcelletti's review of the arborist report, his final question it actually relates to um, tree one, three, four, six, seven, ten, twelve, and fourteen, and wondered if those issues with those trees is it way a way to mitigate the problems? And if so, then they then his recommendation is they would be counted towards a replacement formula. Um, but if they can't, so if you, I don't know if that's a way to weave that into what you're yeah. describing. Yeah, and he, I think there's a couple in here that he's okay. yeah. So these are the locations um, of the those fourteen trees that you that you were talking about, five of which were deemed imminent. Um, so I'm just touching on the ones that were deemed probable. Um, so tree number one, that's the one that I just went through. Um, it has the two leaders attached at a weak crotch, crotch connection, and the tree had a third leader that had already failed. So tree is in the process of failure. His recommendation is to take down um, tree number two is imminent. So we'll skip that one. Tree number three has symptoms indicative of needle cast caused by two fungal pathogens that require several fungicide treatments. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so this one's in, in bad shape. Um, and this one's actually threatening the VFW. So he recommends taking this one down as well. Um, tree number four has a trunk defect on the main trunk. The, the tree has a poor root flare. The target is VFW again. Uh, tree number five was deemed imminent. Tree number six 
The tree has one-sided growth, predisposing it to wet snow and ice failures. There is a cement cure ruling the main trunk at ground level. Um, his recommended action was to take down that one as well. So let, let me short circuit this a little bit. The applicant is recommending taking down every tree on the lot. Pretty much, yes. Not pretty much. They're taking yes. down every tree on the lot. Yes. And we're just trying to figure out which ones fit. Exactly. Okay. Um, and they came up with a figure, and you came up with a figure, and Rich is um, discussed with you the, the possibility that some might be added to the replacement list, which weren't previously. Right. And it's out as though there's a definitive answer or a recommendation, I should say, from him about that. Right. He's just saying if there, I mean, so the fungicidal treatment, for example, may be one way to eliminate the the problem with the needle cast on that one tree. So if there is a treatment to improve a tree, its likelihood, or its probability of failure may go down and right. therefore maybe that should be considered as a replacement. Part of replacement so that's why it's a little bit of a you know right. you then you guys get to determine whether you think you know these other ones that there's a concrete block in the base of the tree if that's what you're saying like well that might be hard to fix so maybe that doesn't count so yeah yeah and the next the next four trees um tree 7 10 12 13 um there's you know been okay that's fine yeah so our bottom line is we can't tell the applicant he can't take down these trees even though some of them right. may be less weaker than others we can only try to get as much replacement as possible either trees that are planted on site mm -hmm. or mitigation money that right. goes to our tree fund right um we have to like really get in the hands of Darberis to renegotiate that number of inches or we have to decide um you'll have to decide that as part of your decision whether you accept the arborist um, this follow-up arborist report so you we were just given questions from our you know expert and then it's for you to determine, um, you know, which ones would count towards replacement. I need to catch you up. I, I, I That's okay. So, so they, we have information. So the, the difference in, in what's, what's the, what's the, it's a different number of money. Yeah, well, the money to put this in. Right. So mm -hmm. what, what is our, our arborist right there? <laughs> Well, it wasn't definitive because it, the, he, well, so, the okay. So, uh, um, well, I think, um, you know, I would just say, I can't remember which tree it was, maybe one and three would still fall into replacement. And there's some of the other ones here that are listed four, six, seven, 10, 12, and 14, maybe couldn't be mitigated. So wouldn't count towards replacement, but um, I don't have the inches. I can, I'd have to look at the okay, book again. Say, yeah. Theory, like the one that says are, could be treated, but it's in the numbers. Right. Like the just exactly. Money right. Trees. You don't have to do the exact inches. We can figure that out offline. Yeah. We just need to know which trees go so in and which. One and three that could have a fun, fungicidal treatment and be fine. That, that was number three. Just okay. Number one and three. three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one, um, had one uh, leader that had previously failed. Okay. And well, and, and number uh, six, the concrete block at the foot of that tree, the concrete block could be removed. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, I, 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 I'm not a hard, I'm not an artist, but I see lots of trees growing around lots of things. And there's, I mean, I guess, yeah. The weird part about being on this board is I have never seen an arbor say a tree is healthy. <laughs> I mean, it's imminent, imminent. Like it's going to happen, like, like right now. You no, know, that tree is still there twenty years from now. So I, I guess I'm. So would our conditions say that? We will um, rely and support the Northampton Tree Wardens recommendation. Yes. As opposed to the the applicants, you're having a second arborist or the the same arborist look at it again. 
That can, that's up to you. Yeah. You can just say, not that you will leave it to Rich, but that you say, okay, replacements required for one, three, four, six, seven, 10, 12, and 14, and leave it at that. Yep. Or, yep. All right. If yeah. they want to have enough barbers, come out and do the whole thing and go after it. And, find <laughs> and all that means is it's a different calculation for the number of trees right. that get planted or a payment into them. Right. It doesn't change the plan. Is that okay with you folks? So can you rephrase what you, <laughs> sorry. We are going to recommend that trees one, three, four, six, seven, 13 and 14 um, get put into the, the calculation for replacement. Condition. You're going to condition. No, We're right. going to condition. <laughs> one, three, four, six, seven, 13 and 14. That we disagree, our arborist disagrees that uh, um, that they're in, in a place of imminent destruction, demise, um, and we appreciate that that needs a little bit extra money to the applicant for sure. Um, <clears throat> but the neighborhood is losing a lot of trees because of the sum, of course, that may have fallen in time. All the white pines along that back row, I understand. I think so just uh so tree 13 um has uh multiple leaders attached at weak crotch connection beach bark disease is evident um the tree is susceptible to beech leaf disease the mitigation is removal so part of 13 the... wasn't on that list just Oh sorry oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh 14 13 is a white pine <laughs> 14, I think, was deemed imminent, wasn't it? Okay. Oh, 14 is beach? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think Rich agreed with that evaluation. He said he would want to hear more. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to yeah. say if you've heard enough or not. Yeah. I just want to, if I could... Just interject real quickly as, as part of the team here. Um, Just come on up and introduce yourself for the crowd on Zoom if there's anybody left here. Yeah, my name is Max. Um, I'm the owner builder. So I just want to be totally clear, just real quick. So our arborist provided his report, and then Rich provided um, additional comments asking if we could respond to those regarding these trees, and we did today. So, so I just want to be clear that this was not, he wasn't respond. He was responding to our original report. And then we have additional comments to those comments. I don't know if that was, if that was very right. clear or not. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's that's clear. Clear. They've no, been discussing. Uh, okay. That yeah, is, yeah. This, that's clear. We still don't know which of the trees though um, are in that gray area that could go into the equation for replacement or which ones aren't. So the only other thing I would add about the beach, which I guess now is number 14, <laughs> is that they um, we've seen across the city that it's um, um, they're um, they have they struggle, especially with um, new development at this one already has the um, fungus and issues that it, that it does have. Um, that has been seen across the city as well as sort of fa in failing trees. But you, I mean, obviously it's up to you to decide whether you want to take it whole cloth or evaluate what the counter discussion is. Well, it sounds like we can, we can make a condition now and that could be a possible approval or we wait to hear what Rich says to the response to your comments, to Rich's comments. Well, but ultimately it's your decision. It's not Rich's decision. Yeah. The tree warden like focuses on public trees, but he's providing, right, yeah, right. some of, right. right, so. So that could hold up the approval if you want to wait <laughs> to get his. I mean, the you know, if you nope. feel like you want all of these to be replaced, the ones that are identified, you could go with that too. And the applicant can decide whether they want to amend or appeal or do something else to further inform the board. Early on, the applicant said that we had a discrepancy between 38 inches and 26 inches. 
they came up with 26 inches on the first report and we calculated at 38. So we could just say, we could just pick that number of 38 at this point, right? But that's not the total inches of these number of trees. I was just taking in two to three trees versus this is more like and five or six. More, two, two or three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. All right. Yep. Given that none of us is going to become an arborist in the next 90 minutes, I would go ahead and stick with the comments that we have from the actual arborist on city staff as part of the recommendations. And if the uh, applicant wants to further a conversation and come back for a tweaked approval at a future date, that's fine. Otherwise, like, I don't want to continue this on this yeah. issue of like abstract trees that are somewhere. So what, do we have a finite number that we would condition today's no, plan on? It's the, it's the list, list that we just read. Yeah, yeah. This is yes. the list, and then it can go into the, the conditions. And then this all of this replacement doesn't happen until the end of the construction anyway. So there's plenty of time for, you know, um, for the, yeah. Right, and none of this Good. affects the plan. Yep. Yeah. Good. Right. Good. It was a complete arborist report, though. It was good reading. <laughs> You're in the trees. Great. Um, there's a couple of people waiting in the crowd. Um, do you still are there still more issues? Those are all of um Carolyn's okay. comments, and then we received DPW comments. Carolyn, I don't know if do you want me to jump into them or do you want to give it? Yeah. I think it's up to the board. But yeah, let's go through the DPW comments okay. too, so that the applicants, the the people who want to comment on it, might hear those also. Yep. No problem. And I would just say that um, if I could jump in, there were a couple, I think the one, the um, there's some details to focus on. They did originally um, recommend, uh, the applicant has asked for a traffic waiver, a waiver from doing a full traffic study. Um, and they also, um, and so DPW asked sort of separately I made a comment about requesting a full traffic study, a water study, and a sewer study. I will, I will, um, I have talked, or I've sent message to DPW and also the applicant that um, I don't think certainly the um, the traffic waiver is within the planning board's purview to waive. I want, I want to let you all know that this has been a new review process. We've lost um, a city engineer from who, who used to do these reviews, no longer at DPW. So there's a whole group of people that are trying to pick up the pieces and are new to this and um, don't necessarily know the details of the zoning that trigger these types of things. So I just want to put that out there that the recommendation did come in in the DPW comments for those three studies, but it is highly irregular to have a water and sewer study for such a small development, as well as a traffic study for such a small development. So I've relayed that information to them, but I think it's really just because this is the very first time they've been doing this stuff. And waiving the study, but not waiving paying into the traffic mitigation. Right. Well, actually, in this case, there is no traffic mitigation anyway, because of the district within which this project is located. So, yeah. Great. Yep. Right. Right. So jumping into the comments here. So the first comment was regarding the traffic um, impact study, um, which Carolyn just uh, talked about. The second comment was the plans proposed to install a new pole near the driveway. This pole should be installed more than 10 feet from the edge of the driveway to improve sight distance when pulling out of the proposed driveway. Understood, we can incorporate that comment. Um, the next two comments were in regards to the water and sewer analysis that they were um, hinting at and that Carolyn spoke about. Um, the next comment here, the outside edge of the proposed drain manholes shall be more than three feet from existing and proposed water mains, understood. Um, next comment, the slope of the proposed sewer shall be at least, um, uh one percent for each sewer reach and then they put after that accepted as submitted 
Uh, next comment, maintain 10 foot separation between site sewer and water connection at clean out and building. Understood, mm -hmm. that's been incorporated into the design. Uh, proposed plantings near the infiltration structure, including river birch and inkberry, both of which are wetland plants and their roots could interfere with the infiltration structure. Recommend using upland species to avoid conflict with the stormwater system. And we can certainly swap those out. Um, all water bends, tees, and dead ends shall be both joint restrained and thrust block protected. Understood. Um, the property owner must inspect and maintain the proposed stormwater management system to ensure that the system continues to function according to design and in good working condition. A stormwater management operation inspected and maintenance agreement that includes the final long-term O&M um, or operation and maintenance plan as approved by the Northampton DPW must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds prior to issuance of a building permit. Understood. Uh, sheet five, grading erosion and sediment control plan and other plan sheets must be revised to address these comments. First, the location and specification for type of sediment barrier must be, I'm assuming, added to sheet C5, um, understood. Add details for proposed sediment barriers to sheet D1 details, understood. Add additional measures on sheet C5 to protect the proposed yard drains during constructions. Um, we can do that. Add a note on sheet C5 that no sediment shall be discharged to the subsurface infiltration system during construction. Okay, so you can handle all of the DPW's conditions. With the exception of those three, yes. <laughs> the water and sewer and yep, study. Okay, good. Um, any clarifying questions before we turn it over to the public? Let's do that then. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Is there anyone in the audience here, Council Chambers, who would like to speak uh, related to this application? Please come forward. And if you give us your name and address, that would be he really helpful. I'm Diana Severance Hanna, and I live in Maryland. You want that address or the address? I think you're currently the only yeah. home next to um, okay. the, um, the property that he wants to, to build. Right. And what address is that? Mine, 63 Park Street. Okay. So I just wanted to um, introduce myself. Um, we've had that home that's my childhood home um, for 52 years. And um, my brother currently lives in there now. Uh, my mom passed away in February. So as she passed away, I saw people working next door. You know, the home there, um, you know, was a family, whatever. So um, when they said they were doing condos, we were kind of like, huh? So I just wanted to be here today um, and just share, I don't know if there are concerns, but just really better understand what's going to be going on there so that it doesn't affect, you know, the quality of life in that home or the neighbors we have as well who've been there just as long. Um, and also, it does it, you know, take away from any value from our home? So I saw that it was to reduce the buffer to our property, which it looks like the fence are proposing. We don't have a fence there currently, and I believe it was stated that there is a fence and they'll replace it. Is that what I heard? No, not right. that they're going to replace, they're going to install a new fence. Right, okay. Yep. Um, but it's like right on the property line. So I thought this was kind of um, for you all to decide if that was appropriate, because there should have been a, a buffer, I guess, correct? Is that? No, so okay. fence fences can be installed right on the uh, property line. I think what they're referring to is the, the buffer from a property line to the house, okay. to uh, the construction of the driveway. So and, I can clarify. Yeah. That. So in this district, Florence Village General, there it, when it abuts um, a residential district, there is a requirement for a buffer, meaning space between um, the edge of a building and the lot line. They're asked, they are asking for a reduction in that buffer and they're showing, and the planning board has the ability to waive that reduction in width. Um, this the buffer requirement is put in place because when you're if you can um sort of imagine there are other circumstances where you might have a commercial building 
right next to the residential district. And so that's the purpose of having the buffer. In this case, this is a residential use and building form that's going to be next to a residential district. And then if you note on the plan, there's just the front section of the property, not, I don't know, maybe 50 feet deep is where it abuts the urban residential B district. Then beyond that is it abuts the commercial district. So the buffer really only applies for that first front section, um, but the board does have the jurisdiction to waive that and based on you know what other types. So it could just be 20 feet of um, trees and shrubs, no fence. In this case, what's being presented is a, fence, a shortened button, buffer, but a fence. And then also the consideration that it's a like use. So in the abutting parcel URB, the same type of development could be approved because these um, townhouse units are also allowed in the urban residential B district. And we're, we're getting closer on the BFW side, aren't we? But it's the same zoning district. There's no setback on that side. But the structures are closer on the BFW side, not on the 63 Park Street side. Right. What's the dimension of the buffer? And they're requesting 18. Is this the 18 and 15 that we were looking at? Or that no. was, no, that was the driveway at I.O. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, where we are, my the, my our property, you know, myself, my brothers now own that. Um, you know, I was just there, or I just drove up from Maryland, so don't mind me. Um, but literally, the driveway, you know, goes right up to that fence. It's a very different feel. And you know, in speaking with Matt's, um, you know, the other alternative was to have the condos on our side. And I was, you know, kind of told, well, if we, you know, the lesser of two evils, you know, do we want to see the back of a condo unit or do we want to have a fence right there? Um, and I just wanted to just, you know, make sure, however this is done, that it's in our best interest, our neighbor's best interest, everybody's best interest. And then I thought I heard up here them saying that they literally couldn't put the driveway on the other side because of some zoning thing. So is this the only way to do it anyway, or? Well, this is the way that they've applied. So I think this is the one we're looking at. Oh, I hear what you're saying, but I I just, because I you asked a very good question, why they chose to do it on this side rather than the other side. So I think it's important to know if they even have the ability to do it on the other yeah. side. Okay, you can do that study if you'd like. So that's fine. No, I, I don't need to. I think we just heard maybe from the architect and the engineer that that wasn't possible. I'm not trying to, I mean, I'm just wondering sure. what's going on. Sure. I no, I, I'm here. I, I, if the study's done, I just want to talk about it. I don't understand why yeah. that's. So they, the, if I might, the engineer and architects went through a number of kind of questions themselves and they decided this is the best layout. So that's what they present to us. I thought I had heard just a bit ago that it wasn't allowed to be on the other no, side. No, okay, no. That's all I was asking. Yeah. yeah. There was nothing that restricted them from doing that legally. But they just for a number of economic reason or construction reasons and some kind of um, what they assumed was the ambiance for the butters that they would orient them that way. That's so, right. I thought yep. I must have misunderstood. I just yep. to no, that's OK. That's OK. Um, and the fence, right. The fence will be right on the property line. Um, and I hear and, what you're saying in terms of the lighting and trying right. to make it less offensive or um, and all of that. But but I guess I just wanted to be sure. Um, we had a voice here and that it was yeah. done in such a way that, you know, was appropriate for the neighborhood, appropriate for our property. Right. Um, and and that's the role the, the board members play who come from all different parts of the city. We try to take into account the abutters and make sure that the development happens that way. But it's going to be a very different lot than what you grew up next to. Yeah. And there's such, you know, there's like postage size stamp lots, you know, and I just, well, it's a lot. It's a lot right there. Sure. And granted, I know it was an abandoned building. Um, but we just want to make sure it's appropriate for. Yep. It's the way that we're going in terms of trying to get more housing closer to the village centers rather than outside the areas. So it's kind of in line with uh, where the city wants to go. Okay. Yep. Well, thanks for coming up from Maryland. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment? Can I just ask the applicant really quickly? So it's a there's a two foot setback. Um, on unit B, is that right? And then what's the setback across the back of the other unit, the duplex units? 
Uh, yeah, I think it was seven, seven, and, seven and a half feet. The buffer is on the one point five feet here. So, the buffer is between the edge of the driveway and the property right. line, not the building. It's not a setback. A buffer right. is a different thing. Right. Oh, I have no idea what we're talking about then. It's just the driveway is one point five feet there from the. Uh -huh. I mean, it's yeah. It's yeah. the driveway to the property line. Or yeah, the building? it's the driveway. It's the driveway. driveway. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. So that whole area, typically, the idea is you have a planted buffer separating one zoning district to another. In this scenario, they're asking for a reduction of that, and then instead of the planted, you know, buffer would be a fence. Um, and so that's part of your analysis. Gotcha. So the and the, uh, garbage that you're just going to contract someone to drive in and pick up individual. Let's let the public. Yeah, let's go. hold that question till till we have the. Let's let the public come okay. up with theirs, okay? For but that's a good one, Sam. So, name and address. My name is Tom Pease. I live at one thirty Spring Street in Florence. I am the commander at the Florence VFW, where we abut your proposal. Uh, we at the VFW do not oppose this project in any way, shape, or form. But I did want to address about a traffic mitigation or a traffic study. I've been a commander there for uh, 11 years now, and we have regular events there at our property, and we have 32 parking places. We've never had any problem with traffic in and out of there. Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, uh, Sunday, Saturday nights are our busiest night. So I can't see any problem having how many parking places you're going to have. I don't see any problem there. We have three times as many cars in and out of there on a daily and weekly basis. But what I am concerned about is the trees that are on our property line. <clears throat> We've had branches falling on our patrons' cars. We're continually cleaning up the leaves and what other branches fall on our side. We've never complained to the previous owner, but it's it, it's getting it's, it's getting bad. And if there's any way we can eliminate those trees, I know we would appreciate it because it is it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle on that on the south side of that building. And, you know, Today's your lucky day. <laughs> they're all cut down. I, hope so. I, I I truly hope so. We've had nothing nothing but problems. And anytime there's a uh, big uh, snowstorm, snow gets up on those leaves and they fall. I mean, on on the limbs and they land on our cars. So, but again, we at the VFW, we welcome our neighbors with open arms. You know? So, welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot tonight. I'm coming from the planning board. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is there anyone, Carolyn, from the Zoom room who would make any see, comments? I don't see any chats. No. Okay. Anyone else who would like to comment? Okay. Uh, questions for the applicant before we close the public hearing? I think Sam had a good one. Good garbage and snow. Yeah, so um, I don't know if there's been any discussion about garbage pickup. I think it's just the regular containers, right? The 60-gallon. Yeah. Yeah. So they would be you know, for the individual units in those, those front bins uh, or storage. So have a, somewhere between a closet and a shed, essentially. Um, at the south of the extension there. And they'll be rolled out on the street for USA Recycling? Um, that, I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know if they'll pick them up from in the site or on the street. Yeah. I guess, you know, Dan and I had talked about this a few times, and we, we I think we had both assumed that the best way to approach it was to have them rolled out to the street. If, if you all have a recommendation on it, Sarah. We'd like the idea of keeping the, the barrels out of sight completely too inside the, so, the uh, shed area. So do we. That's great. Um the, the issue we have with being rolled out on the street, of course, is often they're just put right on the sidewalk, um, which then obstructs the sidewalk for most the good part of a day, unless you have some kind of maintenance man who's bringing them back inside. So I don't know if there's enough of a, a green belt there 
to kind of handle them. So well, and also there's going to be, you know, if there's seven or eight units with two bins a piece, that's, yeah, that's 16 bins out on the street on trash day. Now, most likely what's going to happen here is that like I have a, I have a four unit place and it costs extra money, plus real money, but they will come in and take, they will come and pick them. They'll, they'll come in and they'll back up. They'll, well, no, drive no, in they'll, they'll just come in, right. grab the, the things and put them back. Right. You're going to pay for it. There's other people who call trash besides you. Right? No, 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 true. true. No. <laughs> you can hire a landscaping crew to come every or whatever. I mean, True. Well, we're what just we trying to, to work. Is, all that we need to tell them is whether we're allow, letting that. them put gonna, the trash out on the street or not. Um, 16. 16. Well, that's what we're getting to, that's David. We're exactly. trying to work through that with right. them. I get it. Okay. So, and Sam's saying there's other alternatives. Yeah. So, all, so we're just saying we don't then want the containers out on the street and the sidewalk? Or is that, again, up to them? I think it's going to be hard to enforce. Yep. Good. I mean, certainly the city could enforce a blockage of sidewalk, but I don't. I think it's hard to say you yep. can't have your bins. Uh, I think as long as as long as the the store each place has storage for both recycling and uh, there's space for both recycling and garbage, then you know there's probably not space for the recycling star garbage in a canoe. But you know, <laughs> well, there's probably space for the two units to share one set of bins. Yeah. And share a canoe, possibly. And can we mandate that? Yeah. <laughs> as the applicant thought about snow removal and snow storage. Yeah. So unfortunately, you know, with the site being so tight, um, most of the during the larger storm events, it will have to be trucked off site. Um, there's really not there's some space, I guess, in between like the fencing, like along the southern portion here. Um, but you know, this is like are gonna be all landscape, so we don't really want to dump snow um over there. Um, so I guess as much as we can along the southern side in between the curb and the fencing, and then truck the rest of it off site during the larger storm events. Um, has the applicant made any plans around making these units solar ready or installing solar panels? Any kind of solar? Solar ready, yeah. Perfect roof for it. Yep. Taking down all those trees solves a lot of problems too. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's a trade-off. So we would hope to see solar at some point there. Yep. Um, and it's all going to be electric. I think that's our building code now. That any new building has to be electric someday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but are you? Yes. The answer always. is yes. Okay. Thank you. You can't get a gas meter in this. I move to close public comment. Everybody, <laughs> any other questions for the applicant? Appreciate it. Is there a second? I second. Um, want to go through our conditions before we close the public comment so the applicant can make sure that they understand them and we understand them, okay? Um, who wants to try to rephrase our condition around the tree replacement? The tree replacement is going to follow the, the city's arborous, ar arborous recommendations uh, uh, with the notion that they can dis discuss the, the fine details offline. I have a recommendation. What's your <laughs> Um tree replacement um for trees one, three, four, six, seven, ten, twelve, and fourteen shall be made prior to final certificate of occupancy. Great. Well said. It's much more concise. Thank you. Um we don't need to condition the lighting. That's again going to be a, a further discussion with the planning office staff. 
you should condition to see what what are your parameters um for the lighting because what you, they proposed um you know are the now i can't remember the heights 12 foot whatever posts um 16, so if you want something different then you should say driveway lighting shall be x you say no higher than the no higher than the fence I think that's going to be really hard. Exactly. It's going to be very hard to get the foot candles you want on the driveway okay. at six feet off the ground. I think. I, I don't think it has to be sixteen, so but yeah. Uh, but we don't actually want the foot I, candles on. The yeah, I think they, they, they do. I think we could no, do that with a combination of have. Pollard's and um, sconces on the fence. Some kind of bench mounted. It, it's just a different strategy that we haven't had. Time right. Before. I just mean, if they have a post that's seven feet tall, like, and it's not glaring at the neighbors, like, that should be fine. I think, like, I don't want to say no foot taller than the fence, but I also don't like yeah. a 16 foot. I mean, you could also say that um, any any lighting that, it, um, you know, projects above the fence line has to have a back shield or something like sure. that. Yeah. A back shield and a timer. I mean, why do you need lights on in the middle of the night? Good point. I think we should mandate that they attach lights to the front of their cars that they can turn on when they're driving. <laughs> and the back. <laughs> they can red. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've been down that road before about trying to find an arbitrary time to turn on and off lights. Um, I don't. I and I don't think our revised ordinances speak to that. You know, we're going to see those eventually. I mean, you could also say that they could be on that they're on um, motion, so, motion yeah, after after yeah. midnight or something. So that's a long. I mean, I think if we shield it from the neighbors, okay, and then right. if they have it an issue where it's in their own units, that's the conversation they'll have among themselves. We don't put the city street lights on timers. I mean, I don't know. It just seems weird. Okay, right. If they want it on timers for themselves. But... Ideally, they shouldn't be bothering the neighbors. And then what happens in the site is their own business to figure out. Do we want to do like an eight foot mountain height shielded from the neighbors? Eight foot? I don't know, like just like a pedestrian scale. You like seven yeah. feet? I don't seven know. Feet I don't know. Eight foot, ten foot, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shielded from the neighbors. Shielded. From the yeah, can we just leave it as shielded from the neighbors and yeah. but, let them? And I think they understand. Shielded. They understand our concerns. They're going to try to minimize it as much as possible. Um, let's leave it yeah. at that. Shielded from the neighbors. A combination of bollards and okay. pole right. mounted. Going from front mounted, which is like six feet, yeah. to just any height shielded from the neighbors. So that was quite a jump. Well, any you know, I, you have you could say not to exceed what was last presented, which was whatever it was, 10 or 12, 10 feet, something like that. I think it said 12, but they were representing 15 or 16. I don't I don't want to go that high. There's no need for it to be that high. Right, so um, we can say a number that it can't be higher than. Yeah. So eight feet, she'll look in the neighbors. Right, it's fine by me. Give it up, six, seven. Shouldn't be any higher than me. No, any head knockers. Yeah. I, I, I want us all to go home, but I, I just to point out the lower you make it, the wider the thing has to be to bright to actually get light where they want it. So if they get it taller, they can have a, a more narrow baffle on it. The lower you make it, the harder it is to shield it from the neighbors. That's why I don't like 8D. I don't know. I don't want to. But I don't know. I can't do the calculations in my head, like sitting here. And it's very subjective to say what is the light that's needed in this situation. You know, I think too is, often, you, right? Okay, we fine. go, but it's not subjective to say it's shielded from the neighbors or not. No, not at all. Not at all. Honestly, this, yep. You had a basketball hoop and you had a light on it. I don't know if it's shielded from the neighbors. Who cares, right? Okay, let's let's say seven feet shield, no higher than seven feet shield <laughs> from the it neighbors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they want to yeah. come back and say something, they can. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. But I don't care. Come on. The let's yeah. let's move on something. Um. We have one real meeting and you guys are getting all punchy. It's only 10 o'clock. Come on, we could be we should be here until midnight. You guys have lost your lost your touch. The point is they have until through construction to figure this out. Right. To, to get it right. Um, there's a number of waivers here. One is waiver of uh the minimum ground floor height, which in our ordinances is required to be 12 feet in this zone. Um, but it's a historical house. I think all of you saw the staff notes on that. 
Yeah. So we're asking to waive that requirement. Um, and it, Carolyn, I think you mentioned that they, these aren't conditions, but we mentioned them during the uh, proposed, um, during the motion. The motion includes a waiver right, right, right. Mm -hmm. not to do the traffic study, a waiver to, uh, of the minimum ground floor height. Um, Water and sewer studies. That's not really a that, waiver. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a there, we are asking another condition is that they will install a, a, a concrete sidewalk at five feet across the full length of the property. And granite curve. We would say granite curve. Mm -hmm. We miss anything, Carolyn? I don't think so. Do we need to come um, the, or... So it would be that um, um, a stormwater maintenance plan um, should be recorded with the um, decision, but after language is finalized and approved by staff, um, and that it should be made, the system should be maintained so it continues to function in accordance with the um, design. Um, okay. There are also details about, um, you could also have a condition saying prior to issuance of a building permit that plans should be amended to incorporate the conditions and also um, the adjustments to the grading um, and sediment control plans um, and detail sheets for sediment barriers, uh, proposed yard drains, and um, notes on sheet C5 as noted by DPW, but all of those can be just sort of in revised plans. The details need to be um, addressed. Then you have all that language for your final. Okay. Okay. And I think we were asking also for the waiver for the traffic. We yeah, having... we, okay. we mentioned oh. that. Yeah. Okay, we're sorry. That waiver, two waivers were okay. granted. Okay, thank you. And the buffer waiver. Ah, the buffer waiver. Yeah. So three waivers. Okay. <laughs> you don't. I pity the person who's making this vote. Let's just move to close public comment. I think you heard it. That was. Oh, we have to, we have to yep. Vote. yep. Is there any more discussion? No. Now that we have the conditions and the waivers. Okay. All those in favor of closing the public comment? Any opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. I move to support the the building of this very tight space on Park Street. Uh with the uh with the tree recommendations discussed, the waivers discussed, and uh, so moved. <laughs> could could I rephrase that for you? Oh, you, you, you certainly <laughs> could. Okay. Um. um <laughs> A motion has been made to approve the plans at uh, 67 Park Street. Is it 67 Park mm -hmm. Street? Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. 67 Park Street um, with the conditions related to the, the arborist report and the mitigation fees or the replacement. Um, the condition, the, uh, the final plans need to be submitted um, that are in alignment with the conditions proposed by the DPW. Um, the lighting, um, any lighting installation needs to be shielded from the neighbors and along the fence line, no higher than seven feet. Um, the applicant will install concrete sidewalks. Um, there will be a stormwater management plot filed and maintained. Um, and Carolyn has a better language on that. Um, and then we're also agreeing to three waivers, one for traffic study, one for the height of the first floor of the historic building, and uh, a waiver for the a reduction in buffer. That was okay. Well done. That was okay. What a team. I, I, uh, sec I second Sam's motion. Right, <laughs> off, right off. All right. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? 
All right, all those in favor of uh, approving the application? Unanimous. Good work. We appreciate this kind of development in the plan village. So in the Florence village, um, hope construction goes well. And I hope your work with Carolyn goes well in the next couple of months. Thank you for your time. Where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. All right. Are we have so, some meeting yeah. notes yeah. and to so sound. I support the meeting the minutes. <laughs> the good news is there aren't as many things on the other items as this <laughs> yeah, that was the meeting last week. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> place it with the tropical downpours. I do feel like as we get these tiger and tiger developments, like we don't seem to enforce snow storage at all. There's no way of monitoring that. Yeah, about this though, like if you want to pile snow in your own lot, like why should we? Like, why is it our business? Well, they do with their snow on their lot. I don't know. Does it impact the storm water system at all? Do they do they calculate for that? Um, yeah, I mean, do we hear later if you it all melts at once or something, but, no, I mean, but if you have a snow bank on top of a catch basin, especially in the retention ponds, uh, do the well, neighbors come catch basin? So, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. They have your drains. Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm more worried about all these underground retention systems that can't be visually, you know, really seen. And over the years, what's going to happen to those? But I don't want to oh. talk to Cooley Dick because I had a wet basement in my house, and I'm, I want Cooley Dick to fix it. One hundred percent. I you're like I spilled a glass of water in my basement. <laughs> you're blocked like a mile away. <laughs> yeah, a mile away. I think everyone in the city had a wet basement this summer. Oh, good job. I move to support the minutes. We have any, have we done any? We have uh, minutes. We know, basically. Yeah, we have minutes and then um, an amendment, an administrative amendment that works I don't have any in ours that I can recall. Wow. And um, we're not quite ready to close out the Emerson Lake subdivision. It's been sort of taking a little bit of time here, but um, I realized that we still don't have the, a final statement about the trees that we're planting on the subdivision road. So that will probably come the next round. So the so minutes for June 22nd. I move to approve the minutes of June 22nd. Second. That's an easy motion. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor approving the minutes. Is there anybody out in Zoom land still? Yep. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Um, so the next item this is, is compelling TV. Um, this is an administrative amendment, and the reason why I just um, are bringing it to you because this is for the redevelopment of the Clark School, the original um, historic school campus came before the planning board originally 10 years ago. Um, to allow a mix of residential and commercial use, which is allowed in the, um, um, the urban residential C district if the buildings um, have historic preservation restrictions on them. So it's, a, it's an incentive to preserve um, historic buildings, but allow more flexibility for the reuse of those buildings. Um, one of the buildings, Coolidge, in the back, it's not on Round Hill, but so the main um, Gaywood Hall, which is right on the front, is now an office building. Um, and that's um, fully occupied and used. There's a small building in the back that was going to be a combination of medical and office building, office uses. That's changed over time. They want to convert that space to residential units. And for the reason why, um, you know, residential is allowed in the urban residential seat district, but it's a change from what their initial intentions were. So we felt like it was appropriate to at least put it on a posted agenda and have the board talk about it. It's certainly our recommendation that that be allowed. Um, it is, um, like I said, it's a residential use. It's not a more intense commercial use. 
the other piece of that, of course, is that the two residential buildings, Rogers and the other one, um, were renovated on the east side of Round Hill. And of course, I think it was Rogers was the one that burned during renovation. Mm -hmm. And so that was all going to be residential there anyway. They paid traffic mitigation for all the change of use. So it's not in, in any way increasing the intensity there. We're still about a deficit of residential units. And it's replacing a medical office use, which is more intense traffic anyway than a residential use. I support the change to what this building is to residential. We need to vote on this, or we just. It yeah, way, you, it, but it's not on the agenda. It's on the agenda. At the end, in other items, it's not a public hearing. Um, because I put it on as an administrative change. I see. Yeah. Administrative. Um, amendment. That as opposed to, to requiring the applicant to file a, a, a full amendment, come to the planning board, um, then we record the registry of deeds. Because it's really just, there's no footprint change, there's nothing changing to the campus, it's just the concept of what was going to be within that building. And a butters really wouldn't mind because the butters are mostly concerned about traffic and the medical use would bring in more traffic to the city or to the Right, it's sort of downscaling as opposed yep. to yep. you know, increasing. I second the motion. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor of the amendment for the Clark School? Good, any opposed? All right. How's that pickleball card doing? Making too much noise. I don't know if it's installed. Have you been up there? Yeah, it's been installed. It is. They play once in a while. Yeah. Which one? Where is it? At Round Hill Road? Yeah. It doesn't keep you up at night? What? No. I didn't know. I've got some pickleball paddles. Okay. <laughs> Neither is this discussion. No. No, it's not over to the public. It's it's proprietary. It's a, Good luck keeping me off of that. Anything else? That's it. I didn't notice. I moved to close the meeting. Second. So motion to adjourn at uh, 10.13. 10.13. All those in favor? Aye.